a Wednesday afternoon as the North Platte Plainsmen face off against the Colorado Rough Riders in the hopes that today will bring them their first series win of the season after a thumping job they put on the Rough Riders last night at Billwood Field. Good afternoon, everybody, and for the final time in this 2023 regular season, welcome to Billwood Field, the home finale of the Plainsman season, their fourth to last game of the year. After this, it's a trip to Hayes, but for one last time, Daniel Castagna, our live stream operator, and I, Tobias Abore, will be saying welcome to Billwood Field. Dan, it's a somber day for all of us here as we honor our one last time at the old ballpark. Let, we can... Have made great great memories the last time we're here at Bill Bill Will Woodfield. Well, last night was intern and the players decided to give us all a special treat, and that was an impressive outing against the Rough Riders. 18 to 8 the final score. Plainsmen thumping the Rough Riders, their first win over the team from Colorado this season after losing two in a row against them. And it was all Gas, for, no breaks from the first inning on, Dan. Ten runs in the bottom of the first by Plainsman hitting. They gave Anthony Comfort the ultimate cushion. Yeah, they were on a roll all night. And the Rough Riders could not stop the train. So and they powered through everything that the Rough Riders uh, uh, gave to them. And they run ruled them. Uh, the very first run rule that we ever did. It was all powered by nine walks in the first inning by Plainsman batting, not including the hit by pitch, and three hits that they accrued. The Rough Riders went through three pitchers just to get three outs. Levi Tucker started the game. He only managed to get one. Then Cannon Frost went on the mound, and Frost, well, he struggled a lot, and maybe the heat melted him a little bit. He faced five batters. They all reached base. And he left as the second pitcher the Plainsman have faced this season who has not retired a Plainsman batter. And then Eddie Montoya and Danny Baker came out there and shoved the remainder of the game and got some good length. So now the Rough Riders get to go to Cyan Phillips today on the mound. While the Plainsman, the dad, the hometown kid, Bryce Butterfield, makes what is likely his last start in a Plainsman uniform. Yeah, these couple of days were, pre were pretty hot. So record heat. It was, I, it's Houston weather, so... Yeah, this ain't Maine I, weather. No, I'm saying if my mom's out there, yeah, it was triple digits. was not expecting that. But let's hope that Butterfield, for his last uh, time, can show a really good uh, showcase of him pitching. Well, for the hometown crowd over two years as a North Platte Plainsman, Bryce Butterfield has been a very solid pitcher. In two years, this will be his 20th game pitch, his 13th start in the green and white total. He has a 3-6 and six record entering today. He has pitched 63 and two-thirds innings while as a North Platte Plainsman, allowing 42 runs, just 26 earned runs to a 3.68 ERA in two seasons. He has struck out 54, and today, obviously... The final time he'll get to play in front of the home crowd. Definitely a somber moment for Bryce Butterfield, but also what could be a very exciting outing for him with his baby daughter, Harper Lilly, in attendance. And certainly it's going to mean a lot to him as the Plainsmen play their final home game of the regular season, and nobody better and more fitting to start it than the hometown man himself. Yeah. That's all true. And I think Butterfield will show it and I see how passionate everyone on this team is with baseball. And they want to go out with a bang and win their, uh, this series. Yeah, Plainsmen have not won a series to this point in the season. They've split a couple of two-game series that they've played. they played multiples of those and split a lot of them. But on a three-game series, one has never fallen their way. They won the first game against the Dodge City A's earlier in the month of July. Then they lost two in a row on the road. They won the middle game against the Western Nebraska Pioneers, and the other two games pretty close, including the last one going to extra innings, but that one slipped away from them, and they were walked off by the Pioneers in that last game as their first series win eluded them then. 
They had an opportunity against the Denver Cougars. They lost the first game, won the third game, and the second game, they had the tying run across and the go-ahead run down at third in the third inning, but that is before quite literally the most powerful and most severe thunderstorm any of us have ever seen, or at least I've ever seen in my life, rolled through North Platte. It was hailing and raining like nobody's business, and that game was canceled, so the Plainsmen couldn't win that series. And with a trip to Hayes coming up and a team stacked with D1 prospects and guys who pretty much hubbled the Plainsmen when they came to North Platte earlier this year, you kind of feel like this is your last chance to get series win number one, Dan. Yeah, that, that is true. And it doesn't help that some of the Plainsmen are, uh, are leaving after this homestand. So it's going to be hard to... Um, to play with that, I think with only like 13 people, because th 13 plainsmen going to that haze, so they have to be selective of, and they have to be, what's that word? I don't know what word, <laughs> but they they have to be. Uh, then there's no depth, maybe. There's not a lot of depth in for uh, each position, so. Yeah, these guys are going to have to work the next few days. Carmelo Ortiz, for sure. This is his last game as a North Platte Plainsman. After today, he is heading back to Cudahy, Wisconsin, and Milwaukee Area Technical College. He is sort of the majority of games as the Plainsman catcher this season. He's done fairly well. However, as of right now, he's been in a bit of a slump. Yesterday, he broke that, though, with two hits. His first two hits since July 7th as we see the teams emptying from their dugouts ready with the lineups being read. So we're going to take a break for the anthem and first pitch. When we come back, the final home game of this regular season of Plainsman baseball from Billwood Field.
Welcome back to Billwood Field as we get set for the final home game of the Plainsman 2023 season. And we'll take a look at the lineup and the field for each side, starting with the lineup for the Rough Riders. Kayla McClellan will lead it off. He'll be followed by Weston Miller. Mark Hamry bats third. Ian Baldwin out in right field is cleaning up. As Jordan McClellan makes his first outing against the North Platte Plainsman, the brother of Caleb batting in the five spot in center field. Regan Guthrie is catching. Batting in the sixth hole, followed by Chris Levinson's the first baseman. Danny Baker, the DH, bats eighth, and Nick Varda, the shortstop, rounds out their lineup in the nine hole. As Bryce Butterfield on the mound, his outfield, he's got Nick Hockmark, Kyle McConaughey, and Sam Bond in left, center, and right, respectively. The infield at first is Tucker Bond, the twin to Sam. At second is Rui Yoshida. Shortstop is Garrick Goldbeck, and Jovan Suarez is down at third, doing the catching today in his final game in the green and white is Carmelo Ortiz. Plainsman and the Rough Riders for the second time this series in three games wearing both green uniforms. The Plainsmen and their green appears to be NP hats with the silver NP on the front. Their green uniforms with the white Plainsman script, silver numbering on the front and back, and silver, white, and black armbands on the sleeves and their white pants. Rough Riders wearing their white hats with the green fronts and green brims. Their green, forest green uniforms with white numbers and the horsehead Rough Rider logo and white pants. The hometown kid, Bryce Butterfield, making what is start number eight on the season, trying to move his ERA and improve it from 4-8-4-1-5. As the first batter, Kayla McClellan, swinging a foul ball off of Ortiz, it's 0-1. And a hot, hot day, 94 at first pitch. Here on the last day of the Plainsman home season, it'll be followed by three and Hayes, a little tapper that gets past Butterfield. Yoshida will have to field it on to first in time. A good job by Tucker Bond to make a stretch. There is out number one. A nice hustle by Yosh Yoshida to charge the... Uh, the pitch and to quickly uh, throw it to first base to get that, fir that first out. As Weston Miller, the second baseman, do up. Miller yesterday walked once. Besides that, he went 0 for 4 with a strikeout as he takes the pitch well in front of the plate. It's 1 0. Great save from Carmelo to drop down so it doesn't go into a wild pitch. One O is down and it's two and O. I'm enjoying the cooling refreshment of a fudge bar up here as this day just keeps getting hotter and hotter. Two O to Weston Miller. He takes inside and it's quickly three and O with a man out, nobody on. It looks like that he could it looks like Butterfield can't try and find that strike zone. Has gotta do it here. A three O count and that one's on the plate, so it's three and one. Ooh, brain freeze. Oh, dear. Ooh, that's strong. 3-1 pitch. Ah! Over to shortstop. Fielded by Goldbeck. On to first dugout and a good job. 6-3 put out. Out number two. That was a great Ooh. throw oh, from uh -oh. Goldbeck. Oh, it boy. looked like it was oh, no. low for Bond, but Bond uh, adapted and dug it out of the ground. It's two outs, and Mark Hamry will be hitting... I will be talking in between trying to clean up the mess and eat my fudge bar. First pitch is down for a ball, 1-0. You have me. <laughs> Yay. Oh, God. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's 2-0. The fudge bar is everywhere. Can someone please get me napkins? No, it's actually everywhere. <laughs> oh, thank you, Harmon. No! Oh, God! Did he? As that 2 1 hit. pitch will be swing and a line drive through the middle. That's a base hit to center field, a two out single for the Rough Riders. It's still dripping everywhere. Ah! So that will bring up Ian Baldwin. Oh, God. 
All right, I think I've cleaned most of it up. We'll see. Anyway, Ian Baldwin, a man at first, and uh, two men out. Hold on, Dan. I'm going to throw this away. You take over. Okay. Now. As that pitches in, it is a ball. So it's Butterfield starts to count with one ball. And Butterfield makes it even one and one. Chopper for the shortstop. Goldbeck makes the play on the first in time. Inning over. Garrett Goldbeck charges in quick. Makes a nifty play. And a nice fire. So the bottom half of the inning we go. Plainsman. Allow no runs in the top half. We'll see what the Bats can do a day after they score 10 in the first. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of local establishments. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Clear, focused eye care with comprehensive optometry service ranging from exams, corrective lenses, and treatments for dry eye. Clear Focus is your one-stop shop for any visual needs you have. Bottom of the first inning coming up for the Plainsmen against the Rough Riders. We'll take a look at the North Platte batting order and the defense behind Cyan Phillips. For the Plainsmen, Garrett Goldbeck, the shortstop, leading off after making some nice plays. Ryushita batting second. Nick Hockmer out and left in the three-hole. Jovan Suarez is cleaning up for two days in a row. Just like yesterday, it goes Kenneth Sugi, Tucker Bond, and Carmelo Ortiz in the 5 6 7 spots. McConaughey batting ninth. The only change from yesterday's lineup in terms of order is Sam Bond bats eighth as the right fielder rather than Trey Rungi batting eighth as the second baseman. As Regan Guthrie, the catcher for Cyan Phillips, talks him through some of the pitches as Phillips already. Maybe some questions about the zone or the fielding by Regan Guthrie. At first base is Mark Hamry. Second is Weston Miller. Third is Chris Levinstons. At short is Nick Varda. The outfielders in right is Ian Baldwin. In center is Jordan McClellan. And in left is Kayla McClellan. So the McClellan boys are next to each other in the outfield. It's the Plainsmen, whose lineup yesterday decimated the Rough Riders early, trying to do the same again. Very little win today. What win there is at this moment is kind of blowing across the diamond from right field heading towards left. And Garrett Goldbeck will come up leading off the inning for the Plainsmen, hitting 311 on the season, facing the right-handed pitching Cyan Phillips. Phillips on the season coming into this ball game has pitched a couple of times. He is making what is outing number three, start number two, and that pitch is a little bit away for ball one. He's gone four innings, allowed nine earned runs, pitched to a 20.25 ERA. His first game came against the Plains when he went one shutout on June 19th. On July 19th, he went three innings and allowed nine earned runs against the Pioneers. That ball is smacked to center field, but right there is Jordan McClellan for out number one, a light flow out to start this ball game. Yeah, that was a loud... For a loud crack of the bat, which was a good contact, but a shame that it was a fly out for center. And now that'll bring up Rui Yoshida, who yesterday amassed himself a couple of hits while out there batting in the two spot for the Plains when he went two for four while also walking once and getting his sack fly. He's hitting 211 on the season. First pitch he'll see from Cyan Phillips fouled back to the screen, so it's 0-1. Kean Kean Phillips. Thank you, Faith. I've been saying Cyan Phillips for a while. It's Kean. Got to make that change, that pronunciation in my book. Cyan is a cooler name. (laughs) That is right. 
Awan is in there for a strike, so it's quickly 0-2 to Rui Yoshida. In a righty-righty matchup, he'll be followed by the lefty Nick Hockmer as the Rough Riders try to get through the first inning with no damage done, unlike last night. And unlike the day before when the Plainsman scored three in the first, swing and a foul ball back to Hockmer, so it stays with 0-2. Plainsman scored three in the bottom of the first on f Monday. They lost that ball game 5-4. to four. They scored 10 in the first yesterday. They won 18-8. to eight. So the Plainsmen in the first inning against the Rough Riders have done very well this series. Swing and a miss on 0-2. It's outside. Guthrie's throw to first is on the mark. There are two outs. As Rui Yoshida chased outside and now quickly two outs, nobody on. And the Rough Riders trying to buck the trend. They'll have to do it against Nick Hockmer. He's been powering the ball up seven doubles on the season. He has scored 14 runs, driven in 20. The lefty waits. On the first pitch from the righty, Kian Phillips. Kian Phillips. Pitch is low for a strike. It's 0-1. Great catch for the name. Oh, one to Hockmer. He swings and misses down low, and Kean Phillips is dicing up the Plainsman early. He's already gotten a strikeout, and he's getting these guys to swing pretty tough. He's getting a stronger start than I think it was Levi. Levi Tucker yesterday. Levi Dan, Tucker. you have a good memory. I, d I didn't know uh, the last name, but. Oh, two, two out. It's going to be a chopper on the infield through the glove of Kean Phillips. It's going to be a tough play to get through everybody. Second baseman Weston Miller tried to dive but kind of slipped doing so. And a two out weakly hit single gets up the middle. Yeah, it looked like it almost even maybe bounced off the second base, which I think confused the shortstop and second base. So a really lucky placement of the ball uh, made the McConaughey? Was it McConaughey? Hockmer. Hockmer. The height difference. And now that'll bring up Jovan Suarez, the cleanup man, hitting 222 on the season. With Nick Hockmer down at first after his weekly hit single, Hockmer breaks a swing and a miss, throw down a second online, it skips past, and that would have gotten him out had the throw been actually on target. The throw's a bit away. Hockmer has stolen second. It'll be an 0-1 count. It looked like the second base was not ready for that, and he was a millisecond late. That is Hockmer's sixth steal in eight attempts on the year, as coming set is Kean Phillips with a runner in scoring position and two outs. An 0-1 count to Jovan Suarez, who takes high 1-1. One Plainsman today hoping to jump out early and then would love to hold on to a lead. They only have three men listed as available in their bullpen, Flores, Slowick, and Davenport. If need be, Max Schultz or Hideyoshi Kawahara could become available, but Kawahara went yesterday and Schultz went two and a third on Monday. Pitches high, it's two and one, so the Plainsman would like to save them from having to go extended distances on Wednesday before a Friday, Saturday, Sunday trip to Hayes. Yeah, Su Suarez has to be patient, find that right pitch, because they only have two more outs, so they have to be selective of what pitches to swing at and which pitches to not swing at. 2-1 count, two men out. Pitch on home to Suarez. He takes a bit away, and the count goes to 3-1. and one. On deck is Kenneth Sugi. Plainsman. Would love to get it to Suki, who has been uncharacteristically quiet in terms of power against these Rough Riders the last few games. Oh. Kean Phillips with a runner at second and his 3-1 two-out offering. Suarez saws it off and the count is run to full. Towards the merch tents we have down the right field side. Today obviously being the last home game of the regular season, so it's kind of one of those everything must go before the offseason big merch blowout sale along with the lemonade people who we had on the 4th of July are down there, so after 
rave reviews that day. Dan, we might have to get some. We might. But, yeah, it was so hot. Payoff pitch is high. Suarez walks, and there are two on, two out for Kenasugi, who lives for high-pressure situations. No, I was going to say we're so freaking hot. Uh, setting that up. S setting the merchandise. Oh, it was <laughs> miserable. Yeah, it was miserable. Lefty Suki. But it got me some stickers. Heck yeah, Dan. I got some t-shirts. Oh, me too. <laughs> I got Woo! stickers and t-shirts. So. We got them for free. First pitch to Suki. He takes down as a strike. It's 0-1. Yeah. We've gotten I a see, lot of merch this yeah. year for free, Dan. I'm happy. That is true. But will we ever use it? That's yes. the question. Will we ever use it? I've been using it already, Dan. Are you kidding me? I got a free War Dog shirt that I'm wearing today. Suki, two on, two out. Same as Harmon Johnson over there. Our PA guy, that's a strike on to Suki, and it's quickly 0-2. Plainsman, two outs, two men on base. Runners at first and second. The 0-2 to the lefty, Kenneth Sugi. Pitch home is high, one and two. So the lefty steps back into the batter's box, takes his practice hacks, and sets. He had a two strike count against him when he belted the grand slam out at Wheat Ridge High School against these very rough riders. 1-2, two, takes down, and it's 2-2. Two and two. two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the first. Plainsmen allow nothing in the top half. They have scored at least one run in the first inning of every ball game they've played so far here at home against the Rough Riders. It was 3 on Monday, 10 yesterday. 2-2 two, two to Sugi. He takes outside, ball 3, and now the count is run full. Yeah, as I previously said, the, the Plainsmen have to be selective because you already have two out. So you have to be selective of poss uh, po the possibility of maybe like a pop-up. Runners breaking the 3-2, fouls it off into the crowd, so we'll have to do it all over again. I, I'm somewhat correct with that statement about how being... So how the plainsmen have to be selective on the pitches they swing at. We'll have to see another payoff pitch with two outs and two men on base. Key and Phillips sets at the belt and deals home. Runners break, swinging a ground ball foul right side and we'll have to do it again. Back-to-back -back fouls on the right side by the lefty Kenneth Sugi. Just seeing him but not being able to get a good swing out of it. Yeah, that was like barely by inches. It was Foul barely by inches. So Sugi trying to power home a Plainsman run. Bryce Butterfield had a man on in the top half, got out of that jam, nothing doing. Sugi trying to avoid the same fate against Key and Phillips. He sets. Here's the payoff pitch. Runners break inside, ball four, and the bases will be loaded for Tucker Bond. And all their base runners have come with two outs. That just shows you how patient the Plainsmen are at the and the plate decision, decision that the Plainsmen have and how selective they, they are. Tucker Bond on the first pitch takes in the dirt. A good block by Regan Guthrie. It's 1-0. Bond is back over the Mendoza line after a good performance yesterday, hitting 202 on the season. He is five for his last 12, a 412 batting average. So he has been hot, hot, hot his last few games. As the 1 0 pitch, Tucker Bond takes a strike and it's 1 and 1, as that has pushed him from the doldrums of sub 100 to a point the Plainsman would like, and that is to become more of a selective hitter. And a guy who can become that power guy in the absence of Major Maiden. 1-1, one, one, two out, Tucker Bond, a swing and a miss, and it's one and two. So in danger of striking out and leaving the bases loaded. Two outs and a man at every station. 
Plainsman trying to drive home the run in the first inning, something they've done every day. Here's the one two to Tucker Bond, swinging a line drive on the right side. It's fielded by Nick Varda on to second in plenty of time, and the inning is over. Varda goes the short way, gets the third out, and the Plainsmen have the bases loaded, but it comes with two outs, and they're unable to get anything across. To the second inning we go, and for the first time in this series, Plainsmen do not score in the first. Great Plains Foot and Ankle, providing quality health care since 1991. Great Plains Foot and Ankle is the perfect place to go for any foot pains. And with no referrals needed, it's as easy as ever to schedule an appointment with them today. Maple Park Dental Associates has the best quality dental care and the friendliest staff with top-notch dentists in three locations. You can be sure to get your regular checkups and cleaning plus any dental care anyone in your family needs, including fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, wisdom tooth extractions, implants, dentures, partials, straightening, and whitening. They can even help with those facial fine lines and wrinkles. Love your smile with the help of Maple Park Dental Associates with offices in North Platte, Sutherland, and Broken Bow. Miller Coors provides beer to Bellwood Field for the 2023 season. From Coors Banquet and Light to Budweiser and other Bud products, the Plainsmen are proud to have Miller Coors provide beverages for all Plainsmen home games, and please drink responsibly. Great Plains Foot and Ankle, providing quality health care since 1991. Great Plains Foot and Ankle is the perfect place to go for any foot pains, and with no referrals needed, it's as easy as ever to schedule an appointment with them today. Plainsmen have the bases loaded in the bottom of the first inning, but for the first time this series, no run scores off of it in the first. So to the second we go, a 0-0 score, and Bryce Butterfield will face Jordan McClellan, Regan Guthrie, and Chris Levinstons. As Jordan McClellan making his first appearance against the North Platte Plainsmen on the season. The center fielder who is playing in the field right across from his brother, Caleb. Butterfield's first pitch is a strike, and it's quickly 0-1. Bryce Butterfield, the hometown kids, 0-1 pitch, is taken a bit down. It is 1-1. Bryce Butterfield, a native of North Platte, Nebraska, goes to Western Tech Junior College out in Wisconsin. Is 1-1 one, one offering is going to be a chopper foul, so it's 1-2. And, and a nice snag by the coach in the third base box for the Rough Riders. And so it'll still be 1-2 on to McClellan. McClellan from Kansas City, Missouri. Waits on a 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Bryce Butterfield got him to chase. There is one man out, his first strikeout of the day. It looked like he found that strike zone. He buried yeah. that one down in the dirt and got him to chase on it. So now Regan Guthrie coming up. Guthrie coming into today's ball game. He was the catcher earlier in the series. And against the Plainsman in the past, pitch is taken for a ball outside. It's 1-0. Guthrie did not play yesterday, but when he was the starting catcher on Friday night, as he takes that one inside to make it 2-0, he walked once, hit a key RBI double in the fifth inning that ended up giving the Rough Riders the lead, a lead they would hold on to all ball game. Guthrie a swing and a miss, and it's 2-1. Guthrie waiting as Butterfield home with the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's 2-2. Two and two. He's, he's still finding that uh, strike zone, so his command has immensely improved from that first inning. Trying to lock it down here, 2-2. Two, two. Got him to chase it, a pitch outside in the dirt. Going to be a tough play for Ortiz on to first, finds it in time. K in a throw down. Back-to-back -back strikeouts on pitches that Butterfield throws outside the strike zone, but he gets batters to chase on, and there are two away for Chris Levensteins. Number 99 on the roster for the Rough Riders. Trying to extend the inning with two outs. That's exactly what Mark Hamry did with two outs in the last frame. 
First pitch taken low for a ball. It's 1-0. and Levenstein's one of the many players on this Rough Riders roster who goes to the University of South Carolina Union. Swing and a miss, and it's 0-1-1. One one. A graduate of Ralston Valley High School, as Levenstein's is a product of Arvada, Colorado. Pitch as high, 2-1. Swing and a fly ball hit way out into left field. Chasing back, Nick Hockmer still moving back. Battles with the sun. It dies on the warning track. That one had some real big pop to it. But it finds its way to the warning track and then falls right to the glove of Nick Hockmer. Bottom of the inning we go. The Plainsmen allow no runs, no hits. Butterfield sets them down in order. The Nebraska Lottery. From the Mega Millions to the Jackpot and the Nebraska Pick 5, the Nebraska Lottery has it all. And with realtors all over the state, it's as easy as ever to try your luck on the lottery. And please remember to gamble responsibly. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Looking to unleash your inner cowboy or cowgirl? Check out KJ's Boots and Western Wear. They have everything you need to embrace the Western lifestyle. Find the perfect fit, whether it's boots, hats, or apparel. Step into a world of Western style at KJ's Boots and Western Wear. The Nebraska Lottery. From the Mega Millions to the Jackpot and the Nebraska Pick 5, the Nebraska Lottery has it all. And with realtors all over the state, it's as easy as ever to try your luck on the lottery. And please remember to gamble responsibly. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio, Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Looking to unleash your inner cowboy or cowgirl? Check out. Bottom of the second inning is a loud flyout hit by Chris Levenstein. Dies at the wall, and the Plainsmen will hit in a 0 0 ball game. It'll be the 7 8 9 men for North Platte Carmelo Ortiz, Sam Bond, and Kyle McConaughey. Ortiz broke out of a bit of a funk yesterday. He was sitting in the 030 mark for the month of July with just one hit. He got two on the game yesterday, bloop singles, and now his batting average. Sitting at 213 in the season as he takes the ball inside 1 0. Yeah, that was good for Carmelo to get out of his slump and get two key hits so he could uh, increase his morale for uh, his batting. 1 0, saw him off right side. Going to be a tough play for Mark Hamry, who watches it drop, so it's 1 and 1. And it's not just morale, then it's going to be his numbers. This is his final game in a North Platte uniform, and he would love to show off some good summer ball numbers to his coaches at Milwaukee Area Tech, but also to recruits and scouts across the country for a potential better upgrade when he wants to transfer. And his cold month of July certainly would not be helping his cause there. One and one pitch he takes high, it's two and one. Ortiz. The leadoff man in this inning. Plainsman loaded the bases with two outs in the last inning. We're unable to get anything as Tucker Bond grounded into a fielder's choice. 2 1, fouled off, and it's 2 and 2. Is Travis Monk here? Oh, I see him. Pitch is up high. It is a three and one count. You can't quite see it on the camera, but in the all teal outfit on the right side in the bleachers wearing a gray bucket hat, that is Travis Monk, a legend amongst Plainsman baseball this year. 
He's been an umpire at most of our home games. 3-1 to Ortiz. is a ground ball on the left side. Foul ball. Count runs full as it just hits foul of that line before touching the bag. So we are honored to have Travis Monk in attendance today. He's doing the dad position. He is. He's got his arms crossed. He's in all teal. That is an outfit choice, my friend, and you are pulling it off. He's probably judging from far away. <laughs> <laughs> Travis might be the most favorite umpire that all of us in the press box have on the Plainsman side. Payoff pitch to Ortiz is high by the helmet. He works a leadoff walk. So the Plainsmen have the first man they need on base this inning, and it's Ortiz. We'll see with a courtesy run for him. It will be Trey Rungi. So Rungi will come on to run for Carmelo Ortiz after a leadoff walk. And now it's Sam Bond hitting after Tucker Bond. And I am still obligated to say every time the Bond brothers hit with the man in between them that there is a Sam Bondwich going on. I was thinking you would say that. I have been obligated to say it, and I've said it every single time it's happened so far as Sam ropes one down the line and right, dropping, dropping, fair. That one hits before it goes to the line. Rungi down to third, having trouble with it as the right fielder, Baldwin. So Sam Bond goes down to second, the slide. He is out. Sam Bond tried to stretch in single into a double. He was not quick enough to leg it out. Down to third goes Rungi, and there's a man at third with one out. Nine to four the play as the Plainsman, instead of having men at the corners and nobody out, runners at third and one out, and it's McConaughey, the bottom of the order. With the wind now blowing in, McConaughey takes a bit outside, want to know the count. A bit, bit of an odd decision by the Plainsman to send Sam Bond in that moment instead of holding him at the corners and nobody out. 1-0 pitch, McConaughey takes a strike, and it's 1-1. One and one. So Kyle McConaughey coming into this game hitting 248. He's boosted that by having in July where he's hit at a 250 clip for the Plainsman. Here's the 1-1, one, one, one out pitch, and a man on. That ball is lined sharply into the left field. It'll be played off a hop, and it skips past the left fielder, Kayla McClellan. McConaughey will have to stay at first as it's not able to skip far enough away, but the throw on the infield skips away from the second baseman. McConaughey still holding an RBI single score rungi, and the Plainsmen have their lead. It's one to nothing in the second. Yeah, that was a good read by McConaughey to read that uh, pitch, and it looked like it barely got the top of the bat, and it perfectly uh, went in the middle of that, of the hole. McConaughey breaks from first. Goldbeck takes the pitch inside for a ball. McConaughey safe. That is stolen base number 13. And the catcher, Regan Guthrie, he thought he had him. And after that, he had a bit of a visceral reaction. But he will have to hold it in and puts the mask down in front of his face. So a runner at second with one out and a 1-0 count to Garrick Goldbeck. Goldbeck, the lefty, flew out to Jordan McClellan on a... Hard hit fly out as the first out of this ball game. McConaughey at second, holds, pitches down 2-0. and And right then he kind of trying to bait a throw maybe on back to second base. But Regan Guthrie was not biting. Yeah, recently when I watched Goldback, he's like the testimony of just picking your pitches and just being patient with each pitch. Well, he's patient there, takes a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. But you're right, Dan. Gary Goldbeck is maybe the most patient plainsman on the roster. He has walked 14 times, struck out just 11. It's the same thing he did at Kansas City, Kansas Community College, where he walked almost 10 times in the season more than he struck out. Fouls it back, and it's 2-2. Two and two. He walked about 36 times to only 22 strikeouts at KCKCC. Yeah, he, he just has that. He must have a really good eye for that strikeout zone to read that pitch and see if he should swing or to not swing. 
Kian Phillips throws it low, and the count runs full to Gary Golbeck, the most patient man on the Plainsman's side. He's beginning on base at a clip of 5.08, Dan, the highest of any batter for the North Platte Plainsman coming into this ball game. He's getting on base half the times and more than that that he comes to the plate. As the payoff pitch with the runner at second, McConaughey breaks for third swing in a line drive and gets on a hop and into center field. McConaughey getting the way from Jared Jones. Gary Golbeck a single, strides in a run, 2 nothing North Platte. That they sent it. the runner before the pitch, and a good job is McConaughey able to run all the way home in Goldbeck. Another hit for the Plainsmen. Yeah, that was good contact, and the shortstop wasn't ready, and it just lightly brushed uh, the tip of his glove to get past him. So good contact and good power to get past the shortstop. Now Goldbeck down at first base with Rui Yoshida, who struck out earlier in the ball game. Goldback checked on and he is safe. He has stolen 10 times already this season in what has been just a limited number of ball games for Gehrig. He has played in a grand total of 13 and stolen 10 in 13 games. First pitch to the, de to the second baseman, Ryu Shida. He takes a ball, it's 1-0. Key and Phillips trying to settle down. The senior from Arvada, Colorado, is set to go to Rutgers University of Camden in Camden, New Jersey, one of three Rutgers-affiliated campuses, one in New Brunswick, which is the most well-known one, and one in Newark, New Jersey, the last one in Camden, which is where Key and Phillips is set to do. 1-0, swing and a miss, and it's 1-1. One and one. The campus in Camden, New Jersey, is right across the river from Philadelphia, and, and I mean it's right on the Schuylkill River. It is? It is right on the Schuylkill River out there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know my Northeast geography and geology. Runner at first, 1-1, one, one, count a man out. Kean Phillips setting, firing, Goldbeck Colt swinging a ground ball on the left side. It gets past Nick Varda into left field. Goldbeck holds at second base, thinks about three, but he stops after taking a turn. But there are runners at first and second with one out and the line moving up for the Plainsmen. Only one man retired, and that was Sam Bond on the base paths. Yeah, that was a good sound of the bat and a crack of the bat and good contact from Rui. And then uh, the shortstop was placement of his glove was just weirdly, so it just bounced off his glove and above him. Hockmer, the left fielder, after singling with two outs, back in the first, chops it on. This could be two. Second on to short for one. On to first, there's going to be no throw. Goldbeck holds it third, so the man at first base is retired, Rui Yoshida. But a fielder's choice puts Hockmer on and Goldbeck down to third with two outs. And the cleanup hitter, Jovan Suarez, do up. That was a good sack. Would you can that as a sacrifice? That's oh. just a fielder's okay. choice. I'm learning... Baseball. You've done a lot better in learning baseball, Dan, than when I first met you. You have learned the game incredibly this summer. I'm so proud of you. I'll, I'll show my producers for when we do baseball my knowledge. And maybe I can sneak on to an ESPN Plus game. You better, Dan, as Suarez takes inside for his strike. It's 0-1. He walked in inning number one, moved runners up as part of the Plainsmen continuing that frame. Suarez hitting 222 on the season, 300 when he's got runners in scoring position as they check Hockmer at first base. He's back in time. Hockmer stole in inning number one. Kean Phillips looking in. Now he comes set right around the belt. His 0-1 to Jovan Suarez. Swing and a miss, and it's 0-2 with two outs and runners at the corners. Plainsman leading 2 to nothing over the Colorado Rough Riders. Here in the rubber match of the three-game series, Plainsman looking for win series win number one. Kean Phillips looking in for his sign from Regan Guthrie. He's got it. And the 0-2 home with two outs. Swing and a ground ball on to third. It skips over the glove of Chris Levenstein's. Tried to play it weirdly. Goldbeck scores. Holding down at second is Hockmer. Plainsman now lead three to nothing. And that's going to be ruled in error. 
on the third baseman Levinston, who tried to play it off to his side and just could not get it cleanly. Uh, yeah, another uh, mistake of placement of the gloves and then the pitch just somehow comes up of the glove and bounces straight behind the rough rider. Now it's Kenneth Sugi with runners at first and second and two outs. He holds up for ball one. Sugi walked back in the first inning. Plainsman bringing their eighth man up to hit here in inning number two with two men out. As the line has continued to move after the fielder's choice, three runs have come across to score. 1 0, Sugi takes a strike inside, and it's 1 and 1. With two outs, at second base is Nick Hockmer, at first is Jovan Suarez. Sugi, the lefty, who has hit the Rough Riders well this season. In all three games coming into today that the Plainsman played against him, chops it off the plate and fouls, so it's one and two. Who has been using this series as an opportunity for him to celebrate his birthday and his transfer to Missouri S&T, a Division II program where he will happily see much higher competition, and we wish all the best from Kenneth Stuge as he makes this transition. Yeah, we saw, we saw him at Applebee's. On his birthday, we ran into Kenneth Sugi at Applebee's as we tried to get advantage of the half-priced apps. 1-2 pitch, Sugi socks one in the air to left field, twisting foul. It stays at 1-2. It was you, myself, Dan, Faith, and Nicole. Yeah. I, why did I say you <laughs> and Dan? <laughs> Levi, I meant Levi. Levi. They're interchangeable. He he rocked that fanny pack, though. He did. Kenneth Sugi rocks a fanny pack, especially at Applebee's. Yeah, no. Two on, two out, a one-two count to the lefty. He waits up high, and the count runs even. Two balls and two strikes. Suarez has to run back into first. As Regan Guthrie was looking to make a snap throw down. So Sugi trying to advance the inning to what would be Tucker Bond. Eighth man to come up here in the frame. Waits on a 2-2 pitch. He and Phillips looking back now comes home. Swing in a little looping liner to center field. That one's going to get down in front of the left fielder, Kayla McClellan. Rounding third is Hockmer. Hockmer coming in the tag, and that's going to be in time to get him. A smart no-cut option as Kean Phillips lets the ball go by him, and the tag wisely applied on by Regan Guthrie in time, and the inning is over. Suki gets a single but has to stay with that. And we will go to the third inning, but the Plainsmen now have a 3 nothing lead. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of a local establishment. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. At Mid Plains Community College, we look to the future. The future of students and their success. The future of the workforce and our community. We don't believe in waiting for opportunity. We create opportunity through a hands-on learning experience with instructors that provide one-on-one -on -one knowledge, skills, and training. Because whether you're on your way to a four-year college or university or starting a new career, the future is you. Transform your future at Mid Plains Community College. Scotts Bluff County Visitors Bureau. Located just three hours from North Platte, Scotts Bluff County features some of the most stunning landmarks in the state. From Chimney Rock to the surrounding hills and bluffs, Scotts Bluff County has it all for your outdoor exploring dreams. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of a local establishment. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. At Mid Plains Community College, we look to the future. The future of students and their success. The future of the workforce and our community. We don't believe in waiting for opportunity. We create opportunity through a hands-on learning experience with instructors that provide one-on-one -on -one knowledge, skills, and training. Because whether you're on your way to a four-year college or university or starting a new career, the future is you. Transform your future at Mid Plains Community College. Scotts Bluff County Visitors Bureau, located just three hours from North Platte. Scotts Bluff County. 
Welcome to Billwood Field. Top of the third inning, Rough Riders and the Plainsman in North Platte has jumped out to a 3 to nothing lead. Bryce Butterfield given a bit of a cushion facing the 8-9-1 and one men in the lineup. Pitches well inside a 1-0 and oh count on home to Danny Baker. As Butterfield fires the 1-0, -oh, swing in the line, drive hit into left field. That one's going to drop and playing off a of Hawk as Hawkmer almost has it go by him, but he will throw it in plenty of time. A leadoff single from Danny Baker and the Rough Riders. So just like last inning begins with the leadoff walk, this half inning begins with the leadoff hit. And that'll bring up Nick Varda, the shortstop, who will try and advance the runner, Danny Baker. First pitch, Varda hits it fair down the left field line past the dive of Jovan Suarez. Danny Baker heads into third. He's given the stop sign. That'll be a foul ball. Rolled a foul ball. It looked fair over the bag, but Danny Baker back to first and Nick Varda back to hit. Yeah. <coughs> that could have been a misinterpreted uh, uh, or or what is that word? Controversial, maybe, because it looked like it was fair, but then the um the home umpire had his hands up to make it uh, foul. Either way, Plainsman will likely take it, as the count O oh and one to Varda. Coming set pitch home. It is in there for a strike, and it's O oh and two. Runner at first, nobody out here in the top of the third. Up next, the lineup card will turn over for the Rough Riders. As the 0-2 from Butterfield on home to the righty Varda. He waits and now Varda calls time and steps out of the batter's box to readjust himself. An 0-2 count. Nobody out. Here's Butterfield's pitch home. Swing and a miss. He got him. That is strikeout number three on the day for Bryce Butterfield. And there's a man down here in the third and back to the top of the lineup in Kayla McClellan who grounded out to Rui Yoshida to start this ball game. As Bryce Butterfield works what is strikeout Number 29 in the season. Snap throw on the first. They may have had him. No, not in time. Danny Baker safe beneath the tag. That one was close. That was, yeah, that was a quick reaction by the baseman. Butterfield will throw his first pitch home to this count and taking for a strike is Kayla McClellan. It's 0-1. With one man out and a runner at first. Plainsman leading by three. The top of the third. <laughs> Butterfield's 0-1 pitch is down. Skips past Ortiz. So on to second base goes Danny Baker. He gets a free ride there on a wild pitch. So he's in scoring position with a 1-1 count and a man out. Top of the lineup coming up with the Rough Riders as Caleb McClellan, the leadoff man, standing in the batter's box. Butterfield looking down at the dirt of the mound. Now looks back to Ortiz. Facing a 1-1 one, one count, one out. Pitch home is a bit outside. It's 2-1. and one. Butterfield looks in. And it's 2-1. Pitch is down. Ortiz can't find it, but it's close enough to hold the runner down at second base, so it's 3-1. and one. With one out, and Carmelo Ortiz out to have a chat with Bryce Butterfield. And Dan's going to hop off for a quick second as we have a very special guest in the broadcast booth, Travis Monk, one of our umpires, joining me. Travis, it is a pleasure to have you up here. Thank you, Tobias. I am glad to be here. This is great. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you. So the first comment, the all-teal outfit, what inspired this look? Um, Semi-incognito, most definitely. 
As a pop-up on the right side, catching in is Yoshida, and there are two away. And bucket hat, because it's extremely sunny, and it's straight overhead right now. Yeah, you got to get yourself one of those Plainsman bucket hats down on the side. Only $5 with the merch blowout. I have $100. I'm spending all on Plainsman merchandise today. Wow, I am impressed. If I, I wish I had that kind of capital to spend on Plainsman merchandise. The Plainsman gave me the $100. That makes sense as Weston Miller comes up to hit. What do you love so much about us that you keep coming back here every day, it feels like? I live for baseball. That is a very good response. As Weston Miller takes down low, 1-0 and oh, the count. How far away do you live from here where you're able to like actually make it here for all these games? Lake McConaughey, one hour west. It's not too bad. Swing and a miss. Count goes to 1-1. One and one. What has been your favorite part about just coming here every day pretty much this summer for Plainsman games? Um, being a part of the game, that's what makes it special. Um, being close to the players and getting to see the talent firsthand. And there is a lot of talent in this league. Now, did you work last year Plainsman Games, or was this your first year doing it? Um, I actually took the last two years off from umpiring, but I have done uh, many North Platte Legion games in the past. Pitches down, makes it a 2-1 count onto Weston Miller. So you're pretty familiar with Biltwood Field. Yep, absolutely. This is the finest field in western Nebraska. Butterfield sets up his 2-1. Pitch is down. A nice block by Ortiz. Count moves on to 3-1. and one. Today, hottest day of the year, so obviously you've got the current look in the bucket hat trying to keep you cool, but what are your tips for staying cool on a day like this, especially when you have to ump a game? Uh, as an umpire, you need lots of water to start. Before the game even starts, you have to get your hydration, but as the game goes, electrolytes become essential. Pitch comes in and a plunks Weston Miller, a hit by pitch, so two on, two out, and that's going to bring Mark Hamry up to hit. What got you kind of back this summer to re, you know, start umpiring games again? Oh, I missed it. I missed it. Uh, the past two summers I was busy doing electrical work and I decided to take a break from that this summer and focus on baseball. So it's safe to say that electrical work is your money maker, but baseball is your passion. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Baseball is my passion. Um, I'm actually thinking about going pro, Toby. Ooh, Travis, we'd love to see that. Now, what is your favorite baseball team besides any of these little local teams? Um, generally, I go with the Kansas City Royals, but they're never on TV this year. So I've kind of taken on to the Cincinnati Reds. Oh, one pitch is outside. It goes to 1-1. That's a pretty good choice, at least for as local as you can get with doing well. As Bryce Butterfield tries to settled down. Did you ever do any games of Butterfield when he was coming up to the North Platte Legion before he joined the Plainsmen? Yes, I do. Remember doing him when he was back in Junior Legion. Skips down in the dirt and a good block by Carmelo Ortiz. Two and one. So you'd say, do you know the Butterfield family pretty well? Because they're pretty present here at Bill Wood throughout the summer. Um, not, not personally, not the Butterfield family, no. But uh, I know Bryce. I think he's an ace. He is number one material. He tries to settle down here in the second with two on and two outs. His two on offering. It's going to be swinging a pop-up on the infield, moving back. Garrett Golbeck trying to battle with the sun. Nick Hockmer taking over, and he makes the catch on the inside, and the inning is over. Plainsman leave two on base, and we go to the bottom of the third inning. Travis, a pleasure to have you up here. Always hey, a blast before, to before you kick me out of here, Toby, do you or do you not agree that Pete Rose deserves to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame? I 100% agree that Pete Rose should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. I agree as well. Pete Rose, get him in there, people. Come on. Well, there's your parting message from Travis Monk and Toby Zabori as we go to break here in the middle of the third. North Platte Regional Airport. With two daily flights to Denver, North Platte Regional Airport is just one short connection away from any destination in the world all with short lines and personal service. Remember, on your next flight, to fly with North Platte. Pepsi. From providing beverages to Plainsman home games to being in the local deli's drink cooler, Pepsi is proud to support the North Platte Plainsmen and our thanks to them for keeping the drink cooler stocked and ready at Billwood Field. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. 
Great Plains Foot and Ankle, providing quality health care since 1991. Great Plains Foot and Ankle is the perfect place to go for any foot pains. And with no referrals needed, it's as easy as ever to schedule an appointment with them today. North Platte Regional Airport. With two daily flights to Denver, North Platte Regional Airport is just one short connection away from any destination in the world. All with short lines and personal service. Remember... Thank you to the best umpire in the business, Travis Monk, for joining me in the last half inning. Bottom of the third. Plainsman leading three to nothing, and they will have Tucker Bond, Carmelo Ortiz, and then Tucker's twin brother, Sam, do up. First pitch, Tucker Bond takes a bit away. It is a 1-0 count. Bond grounded into a fielder's choice to end the first inning. His twin, Sam, singled through the right side, and the second was caught trying to go to second. 1-0, Tucker takes a strike, and it's 1-1. One one. As the Plainsman piled on early in inning number two, trying to continue their lead as Bryce Butterfield in his last game in a Plainsman uniform trying to be nails on the mound. 1-1 one one is a line drive hit down the line, foul in left field. That one had some good carry, and it was loud by Tucker, but it was a loud foul ball. So it'll be one and two to the big hulking righty. He has not gotten a home run this season, and a bit shocking with the power numbers that he put up at Oklahoma Panhandle State University, but obviously Bill Wood Field, a much bigger field, as Bond takes inside two and two. Two, two, nobody out. As setting up, Keen Phillips he is offering home swing, and Tucker Bond gets one off the hands, and there's going to be an easy out number one, a 1-3 one, flip. First man retired here in inning number three, and Carmelo Ortiz coming up to hit, who walked his last time, continued what has been a fairly solid on-base trend for the catcher from Cudahy. Trying to keep it moving up here for the Plainsmen. In the last of the third, foul ball, it's 0-1. As our wonderful Levi in the Plainsman Pete costume, enjoying himself as the mascot. Dan, I think we're going to have to leave it here for the mascot race just so we can have video evidence of whatever Levi does in the mascot suit because that'll be fun. I'm fine with, <coughs> I'm fine with that. All right, that and Dizzy Bat we're going to leave the camera on for. There's a strike, and it's 0-2 on a check swing by Carmelo Ortiz. I also think if Travis Monk does anything, we should be sure to have that recorded because Travis, best umpire in the business. No, I'm, I'm just looking at Levi being mascot. 0-2 oh, and a pretty lazy swing by Carmelo Ortiz strikes out. The second out here in the third, and that's going to bring up the eight hitter, Sam Bond. Dan, Levi's a pretty good mascot. You're a pretty good mascot yourself, but Levi down there, he's got he's got the mascot thing going. He's got like a little shimmy, little shake. He's high fiving. He's doing pantomime. Like this guy, I don't know. This guy's got the mascot it. I know. <laughs> oh, he almost tripped. Ha ha. Little looper out in the right field. Going to be a tough play for the defenders. Rough Riders, right a diving catch made by Weston Miller. And the inning is over. Sam Bond, another looping play out in right. So to the top of the fourth inning we go. Plainsman, one, two, three in the third. We're going to keep it here for the mascot race.
<laughs> Levi bucks it in the mascot race. <laughs> oh, that was glorious. Dan, you didn't quite look like that. I mean, you looked good in the mascot race booking it, but Levi looked like a star out there. As coming up, it'll be Ian Baldwin, Jordan McClellan, and Regan Guthrie. The four, five, six men, the teeth of this Rough Riders lineup, top of the fourth inning, and taken for a ball high is Ian Baldwin. Firing home, Butterfield with the 1 0 pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's 1 and 1. Levi was not our ultimate loser, however, in the mascot race. That was the tandem of Max Schultz and Hideyoshi Kawahara, who tried to do like a, uh, you know, kind of one on top of the other little chicken run, and it, it did not go well. It really did not go well. They finished dead last. As Levi booked it, fastest I've ever seen a man run in that suit, especially on a 100-degree day. To one pitch inside, and it's three and one. Okay, but Dan, you were the fastest to sprint, but it was in 100 degrees outside. I'm going to give Levi a little bit of a uh, plus here. He did it in this kind of heat. Three and one to the leadoff man, Baldwin, swing and a foul ball, so it's three and two. I mean, you got to give Levi some credit. That took guts to run in this weather. That is true. But I think if me and Levi did a 40-yard, I'd beat him. Really? In, in, three, two inside a walk in the to start the inning. Shoot, in the mascot. All right, Dan, you want, you want to put that to the test? We'll get you I both in a mascot suit. No, it has to be Pete, though. Both okay, we'll both get you in Plainsman Pete, and we will race you against each other in time who is faster because I saw Levi sprint that way. Levi looked fast. Check on the runner at first. He is safe. Butterfield gets the ball back from... Tucker Bond, after a leadoff walk, the leadoff man has reached in each of the last two innings for the Rough Riders. I came up with the idea first. I think that was the second time when I was uh, it is when I was down 1-0. and L-E-V-I. Levi! 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 We're so proud of you, Levi. He just came back to the press box. He's going to get a hero's welcome for me. Checking the runner at first snap. Throw safe. That one was pretty close. They nearly cut him. <laughs> Levi, do you need a place to sit? You can sit right here. We'll kick Frankie's bag out of here. Sit down in the chair. Yeah, you need to sit. Pitch is a bit inside. It's 2-0. and oh. You look exhausted after that mascot race. Am I on air? Uh, you are on air. Oh, yeah. Pretty. You're a sweaty pretty hefty man. Out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, Dan... Let's bring it to broadcast cam. 2-0 pitch is just a bit down, and it's 3-0, so back-to-back -back walks threatening for the Rough Riders. We're on broadcast cam. You can see He's got my steps goal. just how, ooh, I bet you did. Why did oh you goodness. stop at second and wait for them to catch up to you? You would have beaten them. Oh, I would have very much beaten them. I wanted a little more competition, though. I was going to start from first, honestly, but four pitch that's just saying how that works. Oh, that's sad. Four-pitch walk issue to Jordan ooh, McClellan. And the first two men have reached on walks. Nobody out and a runner in scoring position for Regan Guthrie, the six-hole hitter. Did you at least have fun with it? Oh, absolutely. I feel like I have claimed the – I have claimed to the best Plainsman performance this season. Best Eight Plainsman, Plainsman beat. beat? Yep, correct. All right, so we'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Thank Dan you, thank is you. not going to, but I recognize your talent. Oh, thank you, Toby. And now that I'm no longer official scorer, since our system is down for the moment, I – Try, trying to trying to find things to keep me entertained. What a double play there. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Five unassisted three as Suarez snags it off the dirt. And two outs, a runner at second. That's how you get out of a jam. Absolutely. Love to see it. Now, you are holding that mic close. You're taking the adage to heart that my professor, who I TA'd for, Gosa Sagai, always taught me well, which was you have to hold the mic as close to you as an ice cream cone on a hot summer's Ooh. day. It's a hot summer's day. I could go Gosa, for an ice cream right about now. Gosa, he is holding that microphone like it's an ice cream cone. Yeah, we got uh, Chopper on the left side through the open Smash lemonade out there. Coming home is Jordan McClellan. That ball was not smashed. Throw home is up. An RBI single. It's 3-1. 
as scoring is Jordan McClellan. I know. I got to get some of that lemonade later. Because I, I remember from the fourth, that was really good. What flavor did you get? I think I did watermelon because Ooh, if watermelon if watermelon anything is available, right. I will usually go for watermelon. And they watermelon. had lemons in there still, correct? They were still lemons yeah. in there. Yeah. It was watermelon lemon. Yeah, that sounds really good, actually. It was delicious. I realized what I didn't do before today. Yesterday we had a sound bite from the game when Dan was talking about dino nuggets when I said, ooh, that's toasty. I did not put that in sound director. Mm, Toby, come on. But I have the Tighten it up, kid. I have the audio saved on my computer and my phone. First pitch is a bit away, so it's one and zero. I'll see if I can't uh, just play it myself for the home crowd because that was worth it. Toby, uh, since I was, was uh, not up here during the interview, how did Travis Monk go? Travis Monk is a fantastic interview. It was fun. I'm he, glad I lived up to the hype. I'm gonna have to watch that later. That ball is hit sharply out into left field, moving over Hockmer. That's going to be a fair ball down right the line. Right on the line. Right on the line. Coming down to third is the runner in Levinston. He will stop there. A double hit by Daniel Baker, or Danny Baker. Maybe he goes by Daniel in its formal systems. Hits it down the line, and it's two on, two out. I misread my handwriting, and that's why I called that's him Daniel. That's a shocker. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, you can judge my handwriting all you want, but you at least can read it when you put the book in. So I do have to call you multiple times. Well, that's because you don't understand, like, whether or not that's, like, you know, whether why I ruled it that way sometimes. Or when pitchers came in. Mostly pitchers, yeah. yeah. It's usually pitchers. Yeah. Which that Butterfield I, getting into his uh, first treble of the day here, giving up a, giving up a run here. Two, two on a two on, uh, scoring position as well. Hometown kid trying to send the hometown crowd happy. Yep. And his final start as a Plainsman. There's a strike. It's 0-1-1 with two out to the nine hitter, Nick Varda. Ooh. One on the nine hitter early that... Is hopefully going to serve him well here. And, Mom, if you're watching this, which I know you are, don't comment on my hand. I know you're texting me about my handwriting right now. You don't have to do it. I know what you're going to say. It's bad. I can read it. People Mom can knows read best. it. Mom knows best, Toby. Okay, I know it's bad, but, like, it's, it's serviceable. That's all that it needs to be. Toby, what is the temperature outside currently? Um, well, it is currently 92, but it 92. feels like 100. It certainly does, especially in Plainsman Pete. I feel like I'm in a sauna right now. Ooh, I could use a good sauna. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. I can finish out this inning. Oh, two home, a, a bit away, guy. and it's one and two. Yeah, it feel, it's 92. Feels like at 100, and there's a heat advisory right now. Good to know. I might have to give me some lemonade. Ooh. Until 9 p.m. Central Time Thursday, heat indexes of up to 105 degrees. That's hot. One, two is down. Two and two. As I said yesterday, ooh, that's toasty. That one was a lot louder. Are we here? There we are. Toasty. There we go. I said toasty. Toasty. Oh, uh, Dan, I uh, just want to ask, am I on currently? Is my, my mic working? Is it not Your on mute today? On. <laughs> Your mic is not muted today. We're proud of That's you. That's always good. That's always good. 2-2 two, two home. A pop-up on the infield. Playable. Ortiz can't find it. Now does. Makes the catch in foul territory behind the plate. And the inning ends. Butterfield allows a run, but he strands two men on base. So to the bottom of the fourth inning we go. Plainsman leading by two. It's three to one. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of local establishments. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio, Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Clear, focused eye care with comprehensive optometry service ranging from exams, corrective lenses, and treatments for dry eye. Clear Focus is your one-stop shop for any visual needs you have. Check them out at clearfocuseyecare.com. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of local establishments. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. 
a proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million... Plainsmen allow a run on the top of the fourth, so the bottom half we go in a 3-1 ball game. It'll be Kyle McConaughey, Garrett Golbeck, and Rui Yoshida. Harmon did it. He's not our se your center fielder. He's not my center fielder. He's our center fielder. Oh, Harmon, no. Oh, we called him the third baseman? Harmon, how long have you been doing this? down on a strike called as it bounced in the dirt but showing bunt was McConaughey it's 0-1 this is the last day we get to have this press box crew I'm gonna miss every single one of them as we've had a lot of fun this year in the last home game of the regular season McConaughey pulls back on a bunt and it goes to 1-1 one one. next three days Plainsman will be in Hayes Kansas they get a day off before that but all I gotta say is to the best press box crew in the world, thank you, and I'll have more to say later, but for now, it's kinda all I can come to. Pitch is high, and it's two and one. McConaughey trying to earn his way on base. Start this fourth inning out right for the Plainsman, who scored three in the second, and went one, two, three in the last half, when they were up to hit in the bottom of the third. Two, one, pitches inside, it's three and one on to Kyle McConaughey. The very bottom of the Plainsman batting order with Garrett Goldbeck in the blue helmet with the red, white, and blue KCKCC logo waiting on deck. Logo with the star-spangled banner across it. 3-1, chopper foul off towards some fans by the concourse who are not paying attention, and that could have turned pretty bad on a chopper. Luckily, everyone's okay. It's 3-2. and two. That's why at baseball games, someone's got to pay attention in your group. You never know when a chopper's going to come your way and catch you. Full count to the leadoff man here in the inning. The nine man, McConaughey, swinging a line drive into right field. Getting down, getting down, getting down. Fair ball. McConaughey, he's going to try and leg it out for two. The throw into second base is off the line. McConaughey, a leadoff double. And that was a legged out double by Kyle McConaughey. And coming up, the leadoff man, Garrick Goldbeck. He singled back in the second, drove in the first runner of his night, his eighth on the season, second of that second inning, as scoring was Kyle McConaughey. Once again, he's got McConaughey in scoring position with nobody out. Shows bunt, pulls back, it's a strike, 0 and 1. Trying to drive in will be RBI number nine on the season for Garrick Goldbeck, who has been absolutely stellar so far this year on the Plainsman side, facing Kean Phillips, the graduate of Wheat Ridge High School. 0-1 pitch, Goldbeck takes a strike, and it's quickly 0-2, as that one was a little too inside on the hands for him to swing after. Kean Phillips, earlier this year, Faced the Plainsman, pitched one inning, and retired all three batters he faced on plays on the infield. Two lineouts and a ground out as Phillips steps off the mound. That was back on June the 19th, the very end of a Plainsman five games in four days road stand that they had. Phillips was the last pitcher on the mound for the Rough Riders. He went the ninth and retired the Plainsman and gave the Rough Riders the save in a one in a. 6-5 win, it's low, 1-2 and two the count on to Goldbeck. Who steps back in with Kyle McConaughey at second base and nobody out as the lineup card turns over for the North Platte team. Setting is Kean Phillips. Is 1-2, McConaughey breaks for third, pitches outside for a ball, throw down, he's safe. McConaughey stolen base number two on the game. That's his 14th of the season. He steals third, and now it's a 2-2 count. Nobody out to Goldbeck with the runner 90 feet away for making it once again a three-run lead for the Plainsmen. Yeah, it just shows how quick McConaughey uh, is and how fast his legs can be. 
Here's the 2-2 home. Go back chopper on the infield. Going to be playable for Miller. He'll have it on to first in time. Scoring is McConaughey. So a sack hit brings the runner home. 4-3 the put out. Plainsman have the lead at 4-1. That was a good sacrifice play. And doing it instead of trying to do it to get a stat in the an individual you do it for the team and you get a run on a run in for the team to make it a three run difference Golbeck undoubtedly learned that from his dad his coach at Kansas City Kansas Community College where he's been playing the last year and he'll be playing next year as Rui Yoshida takes a pitch in by the knees it's 1-0 and Yoshida one of two players, including Hideyoshi Kawahara, currently in the Plainsman roster from Japan, is from Tokyo. 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss, and it is 1-1. One and one. Goes to Clarence. Coming set is Kean Phillips. On to Yoshida, the 1-1 one -one offering is inside for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. With one out... Trying to get on base as the Plainsmen have a run across here in the inning, but now nobody on as the infield plays its normal depth against Yoshida. He swings and misses. There's strikeout number two on the day for Yoshida. The throw down to first is in time, and two men are out before Nick Hockmer can bring the bat up to the plate. And this is the same position Hockmer found himself in back in the first inning when he singled through the middle and started a two-out rally for the Plainsmen before they were retired. Nobody scored despite having the bases loaded. Hockmer, the lefty, has singled and reached on a fielder's choice. Standing up in the back of the batter's box, the powerful lefty on the first pitch swings and chops it over for the shortstop. Varda, it goes beneath his glove. Nick Varda absolutely messes up what is a routine play. And with a not too particularly speedy Hockmer, that's going to be... See how we're ruling it. I'm particular to give that one a single. Hockmer hit it low, and we're going to be calling that a hit. It goes in my book, and because point streak is broken today for Levi, what goes in my book is gospel the next few days. And so I put it in as a single. As Suarez takes inside... It's 0-1. Looking back at Jared Jones in the third base coach's box. Now steps into the batter's box. Infield in normal depth. Holding on at first is Mark Camry for Hockmer after the single through the left side. 0-1 pitch is in there for a strike and it's 0-2 with two outs. Suarez in danger of being retired. He has walked and reached via the error today. Has yet to be retired by the Rough Riders defense. But it, it, it looked like 91, right? That's his number, right? It has been, I think, has been good uh, in the strike zone. Oh, two is a chopper foul. We say where we are. Yeah, Kean Phillips. This inning has been able to find the zone, but his big problem has been he, maybe he's finding the zone too much, putting stuff over the plate for the Plainsmen to drive. That's how they've gotten some of their runs, including the one they got earlier, that double hit by McConaughey and the single by Hockmer. All pitches on the inside of the plate. They were able to drive as the 0-2 to Suarez, swinging a chopper right off his foot, and that's going to sting. It's a sting, sting live swing. I thought you were going to say a stingling. Oh, stingling. Yeah, I thought we were going the same route as uh, yesterday, what happened at the very end of the broadcast, when if you caught the very end of that game, Nicole, after a boring game, said, Zaboring Zabore, and I demanded that you cut the stream right then and there. And to your credit, Dan, you did. We will not tolerate that in this press box. <laughs> oh, two pitches hit on a line out to center field, moving back Jordan McClellan. He settles and makes the catch on the fly ball, and the fourth is over. Plainsmen get the run back that they allowed in the top half, so they are back to a three-run lead. It's 4-1, to one, heading to inning number five. 
Great Plains Foot and Ankle, providing quality health care since 1991. Great Plains Foot and Ankle is the perfect place to go for any foot pains. And with no referrals needed, it's as easy as ever to schedule an appointment with them today. Maple Park Dental Associates has the best quality dental care and the friendliest staff with top-notch dentists in three locations. You can be sure to get your regular checkups and cleaning plus any dental care anyone in your family needs, including fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, wisdom tooth extractions, implants, dentures, partials, straightening, and whitening. They can even help with those facial fine lines and wrinkles. Love your smile with the help of Maple Park Dental Associates with offices in North Platte, Sutherland, and Broken Bow. Miller Coors provides beer to Bellwood Field for the 2023 season. From Coors Banquet and Light to Budweiser and other Bud products, the Plainsmen are proud to have Miller Coors provide beverages for all Plainsmen home games, and please drink responsibly. Great Plains Foot and Ankle, providing quality health care since 1991. Great Plains Foot and Ankle is the perfect place to go for any foot pains, and with no referrals needed, it's as easy as ever to schedule an appointment with them today. Maple Park Dental Associates has the best quality dental care and the friendliest staff with top... Bryce Butterfield out for his fifth inning of work on the mound for the North Platte Plainsmen as they lead 4-1 to one on the final game we will play this season at historic Bill Wood Field before we go to Hayes, Kansas for three. And it's back to the top of the order. Kayla McClellan, Weston Miller, and Mark Hamry do up. McClellan, the only man in the top three who has not reached today... For the Rough Riders, there's a ball down, 1-0. and oh. Both times today that he's been retired, he's been retired by the second baseman, Rui Yoshida. Want a ground out, want a pop out, and that ball is smoked to center field, a leadoff single. They got right up the middle, and a hot hit ball. So for three consecutive innings, the leadoff man has reached against Bryce Butterfield, and now Weston Miller, who was plunked by a pitch his last time, will come up as finally joining us on the broadcast is Faith, one of Hello. our baseball operations interns. Faith, it's a pleasure to finally have you up here. Yes, thank you. I um, was supposed to be on here a couple weeks ago, but that didn't happen because I'm busy. Never happened. I got to fill up water coolers, so... Yeah, you're the one of us who actually does their job like the entire time. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, everyone everyone's working, but I gotta I gotta run around a little bit, so makes it hard to be up here all the time. It does. As Miller faces a one oh count. I know you got lemonade earlier. You got the Barbie. What are your reviews on the Barbie lemonade? Um, well, first of all, it is delicious. So it's like pink lemonade. I I think I heard her say something like watermelon and possibly dragon fruit maybe oh, but good. there's also gummy like gummy bears in it there's gummy bears on top of it and there's also edible glitter so it's very sparkly oh my God. and delicious that just sounds really good it was and i mean it's only eight dollars but it's a huge thing so i think it's totally worth it i am intrigued for that for eight dollars dan i'll pay you back yeah that's the hard part they are cash or check only. Yeah, like I don't have a who checkbook. Who brings a checkbook to a baseball field? But Nobody. that is not the point. Why are you guys over there bringing checkbooks to baseball <laughs> fields? That's the better question. I mean, if my grandma was here, maybe she'd have her checkbook. But <laughs> My stepdad, Richard, is very adamant about his checkbook, checkbook so this is going to make him very happy. Very ha yeah, I know. You, you would think that in 2023, a, a business would have, like, you can Venmo us. But no, they're like, cash or check. Or even like a square option or something. Something, but, something, but no. no. cash or check, that's Smashing it. Smashing lemons, old school. But very, very, very good lemonade. So 10 out of 10, I would go buy it again. I actually did. This is my second time. Last time they were here, 4th of July, I bought lemonade. So. That's true. So this is second go around. I will need to get some at some point as Hamry takes a strike inside. It is O oh and 1. Can you describe a little bit about what you do for the Plainsmen? Because so far, every intern I've had to do it has come up and described what they do. And maybe, unlike the other baseball operations intern, you won't have to write it down and look at your Levi phone. Had write, he Levi had to write down, down what he does. My goodness. Levi, for a while, was going very off script on what we were originally sent. He was like, this is what we're doing. I'm like, okay, dude. 
Um, so what do I do? I have sort of just turned into the one that does the majority of the pregame and postgame. So um, Levi and I will go to Gary's together, but we set up pregame food for both teams, and then I obviously like order it if we're getting anything from like Subway, Renza, stuff like that, and then also postgame. So shout out Domino's for postgame tonight for the last game. I'm trying to end on a better note than Renza for last game. Um, and then I also make sure pass lists are in the dugout, get those families in for free, and fill up water coolers. So that's sort of what I do. <laughs> a little bit more, but that's, that's the gist. That's the base level. Yeah. All right, so the next question I have is the other night, I have described this movie, but oh I don't know if I God. accurately <gasps> talked about it enough. Deadly, Deadly Delph. Delph! You guys, it was amazing. If you have not heard of Tubi, it is a channel that is on, I would think, most smart TVs. It is on Roku TV for sure, but it is a free app. Everything on it is free, so there are occasionally really good stuff, like like good movies on there that you would see at a movie, th you know, like that you would watch normally, but Deadly Dilf was on there, um, a Tubi original, and I, I mean, it was just perfection. It was definitely, it was way better than we were all expecting. Yeah, I don't know what I was expecting from Deadly Dilf, but no. it exceeded. It got crazy. It did. The I was. It was got dark. I it got dark <laughs> quick. I thought it was just going to kind of be funny and like, you know, oh, bad Tubi movie. No. No. It was like a good, it was very well produced. Like, good on them. But yeah, it got, it got dark quick. Basically, this girl went crazy over this guy who was way too old for her yes. and her dad got shot and killed and then she accidentally murdered this guy's brother and then the guy's wife also got hit by a car and died it was crazy like too many people died and all the wrong people died really i mean i was first off i was expecting the deadly dilf i thought the title was going to be because he murdered the girl's dad that just never came to no, be. No, the, the the dad being murdered, I don't even know what that whole plot line was. Be maybe just to show that she can't handle trauma very well. I guess. Because it's like, he got shot and murdered by this mugger, and then like that was basically <laughs> it. <laughs> she kept going to his grave. But well, I guess it does advance the plot in a little bit because she doesn't want to go and spend the night at her house alone. Alone, which is why, yes, you are There's correct. There's an effect, yeah. She spends the night at this guy, this married man's house. Who has a everybody. child. With a child already on his second wife. Who he and cheated on his he, previous yeah, wife He cheated with. on the previous wife and then <laughs> cheated on this wife again with this 20-something-year-old college girl. Yeah, and then at the very end of the movie, he's in prison. He is in prison, but I, I was thinking about that. I think that's because she had called CPS on him. That is true. So I think that's why. It's because they were like, nah, there's a gun in your kid's room, so you're See, going, I thought it was because you're going he to prison. held the gun to the... It could be that, too. <laughs> there are many reasons why <laughs> he could, could be, be in jail. It was, there was a lot happening in this movie. That is just like, a movie but, that everyone you know, should watch. Watch it if you... Tubi, it's free, like I said. Everybody should watch it. Deadly Dilf. I do highly recommend Deadly Dilf as a movie for everyone out there. It was it was something. <laughs> now, another show that we were invested in for a while until we finished it, Milf Manor. <laughs> Milf Manor, yes. Milf well, Manor. Dilfs and Milfs today. We're just bringing out the big guns in the Manor broadcast. Milf was also, like, that's just, like, peak reality television right there. Oh, yes. It has, it's perfect level of trashiness oh, to where sure. I would like everyone to know that I did look them all up on Instagram not a single one of the couples is still together wow so I'm shocked that worked out really well for all of them but you know of course some of them are still friends oh. as many like to claim um but yeah no that show was amazing and also like kind of messed up a nice play by Gary Goldbeck and the stretch by Rui Yoshida to end the inning. Faith, thank you for joining me on the broadcast and yes. talking about the trashy and weird shows and movies that we watched when we have oh, way too much downtime. Of course, we're going to have to do it again sometime before we all leave. I mean, we got time tomorrow, and then you, Nicole, and I are staying up until we, the 3rd. We are, so we can we can find some, some good trashy stuff to watch. Oh, there's plenty out there. We're going to take a break when we come back. Bottom of the 5th here in North Platte, Plainsman leading 4-2. to two. 
The Nebraska Lottery. From the Mega Millions to the jackpot and the Nebraska Pick 5, the Nebraska Lottery has it all. And with realtors all over the state, it's as easy as ever to try your luck on the lottery. And please remember to gamble responsibly. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Looking to unleash your inner cowboy or cowgirl? Check out KJ's Boots and Western Wear. They have everything you need to embrace the Western lifestyle. Find the perfect fit, whether it's boots, hats, or apparel. Step into a world of Western style at KJ's Boots and Western Wear. The Nebraska Lottery. From the Mega Millions to the jackpot and the Nebraska Pick 5, the Nebraska Lottery has it all. And with realtors all over the state, it's as easy as ever to try your luck on the lottery. And please remember to gamble responsibly. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio, Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Bottom of the fifth inning. Kenneth Sugi due up for the Plainsman. It'll be Sugi, Tucker Bond, and Carmelo Ortiz as their lead has been trimmed to two after a run came across against Bryce Butterfield in the top of the fifth inning. So Sugi has walked and singled today in the lefty who has two home runs on the year. One at home against the Game Day Angels. The other was the Grand Slam on the road against the Rough Riders, and he takes the first pitch well high. It's 1-0. and Now, Dan, at some point today, we're going to have to go downstairs because we didn't get to do intern Dizzy Bat yesterday due to the um, run rule, so we're going to have to hold the bats and counts for the uh, of-aged interns who will be doing the drinking and the spinny portion. So, Dad, haha, I don't have to do the Dizzy Bat portion. I just get to count for them. We get the easy portion. We really do get the easy part of Dizzy Bat. We just stand there and say one, two, three, and then watch everyone tumble. It's going to be funny. Sugi takes down. It's two and one. Yeah, that's the fun part. That really is the fun part. Climbs back into the batter's box and sets up. Sugi facing Kean Phillips, who is out for inning number five of work as the starter. His 2-1 pitch, Sugi takes well away, and it's 3-1. Plains and trying to work a leadoff walk as down to the bullpen goes Nick Varda, who will likely be doing the catching for Jordan Oliver, one of the Rough Riders pitchers who is making his way down, likely will be on relief for Kean Phillips whenever his day is done. That could be this frame. That could be at the next frame as Sugi fouls it off in the batter's box. Count is full. Yes. I've been quietly following the score of the Red Sox-Braves game, and I'm happy to tell everyone out there that in game two of two between the Red Sox and the best team in baseball, the Atlanta Braves, my Boston Red Sox are leading 4-3. to three. We won yesterday 7-1. to one. So who's the real best team in baseball? Full count pitch inside, a walk by Sugi. All I got to say is go Sox. Sugi works a leadoff walk for the Plainsman, and Tucker Bond will be due up. Bond today is reached on a fielder's choice, which was the end of the inning, and also started inning number three with the ground out back to Kean Phillips. Kean Phillips sets up high, now comes low by the belt, and his first pitch, Tucker Bond, a line drive to center field. That's going to get down in front of Jordan McClellan. On to second goes Sugi. And both men are on. That's a perfect crack of the back and just arced just in front of center field. So good job, Bond. Now it's up to Carmelo Ortiz. He's 0 for 1 on the day. He walked his courtesy runner, Rungi, scored a run in the top of the second and bottom of the second inning. He also struck out 
in the third. He's got two on and nobody out as he tries to end his Plainsman career on a high note. Shows bunt, pitch misses, and that one catches Regan Guthrie, and he's in some pain. That pitch got in, and it smacked him. And that one got right between the legs, and by his, judging by his reaction, I don't think Regan Guthrie was wearing his protective cup. That's an essential equipment for a catcher. Yeah, especially for a catcher. I mean, in baseball, guys don't always wear one. Really? I but usually catchers do. Yeah, because with their uh, stance, it's just freely out. <laughs> that sounded weird. Sorry oh, the 39 God. people who are Daniel, watching. Daniel, 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 no. But am I right? Uh, I'm right, though. You're right, but you shouldn't be wording it like that. And... Uh, this is coming from the same person who willingly brought up Deadly Dilf and Milf Manor on the broadcast, so maybe I shouldn't be talking. <laughs> maybe none of us are in the right spot to be talking here, Dan. No. We need one of those, like, automatic bleeper things. Ooh, those are too fancy, Dan. <laughs> that's, that's, that's too high of a broadcast quality for us. But, I mean, yeah, that would be helpful. I don't know. Dan, we can figure something out to talk about while Regan Guthrie shakes it off. You read any good books lately? What? Read any good books lately? I don't know. That's a I do, topic. I don't like reading books. Daniel, <laughs> my mom's a librarian at a school. I love reading books. No, I don't like reading books. Here's a word from Cowboy Pete. <laughs> this has been a word from Cowboy Pete. The I'm running out of things to talk about, y'all. It's the no, last yeah, home yeah. game. I, I, I think I didn't read books after I... Almost finished the Harry Potter, se the ha Harry Potter series. <laughs> That's so. heavy. So yeah, I don't know. Like it's like th thick. Yeah, those are thick books. Yeah. So yes. Well, I will like to say while Regan Guthrie is shaking himself off, we got a long list of thank yous today on the home broadcast. It's going to be an even longer one on Sunday when the Plainsmen play the Hayes Larks on the road. Be sure to tune into that game, but first thank you, in my mind, just off the top of my head, goes out to all the interns here at Billwood Field for the summer as Guthrie back behind the plate. Interns have made the show run this year, and that I've, is without doubt. I've told all the interns to watch, her, to listen to her, and they said they are. All of them who have been with this team all year long, who have been with the team throughout the season, a thank you to every single intern for the North Platte Plainsmen this year for making our time at home more enjoyable and also making this a really great environment. The closest group of interns I could possibly imagine for as Ortiz steps back into the batter's box. So close even that I got one of the team baseball, or at least a baseball with the team logo, and I got all the interns to sign it for me. So a nice keepsake for all the interns and all the press box crew. I do. I, I'm, I might get a souvenir ball. Ortiz shows Bunt, Hamry, the first baseman, working in, and that pitch goes past the bat. And this time it hits his leg protector. Owen oh, to the count. And Regan Guthrie is just keeping to get hurt, Dan. I don't know why he's not taking care of himself behind the plate, he's, but he's back in the crouch. He's injury prone or in the way? It's about right. Accident prone, injury prone. Oh, accident prone. It's kind of all the same. Kind of ends same up the same way. Yeah, same diff. Up top is Key and Phillips. Now his 0-2 home to Carmelo Ortiz. First baseman drawn in. Ortiz takes a strike, and he is punched out. So his final game in a Plainsman uniform had started. Well, pretty uneventful. Two strikeouts and a walk. And now it's the eight-hitter, Sam Bond, who dropped a little single down the right field line, was out trying to move it up for two back in inning number two. The other Bond of the Bond boys... Getting ready, two on, one out. First baseman in on the grass, pop up. First base side, moving back, Mark Hamry still moving back in foul territory, a basket catch in the shadows of the light tower, and there are two away here in the fifth. And that'll bring up Kyle McConaughey. McConaughey today, two for two with a single and a double. He has scored a run both times he's gotten on base. Plainsman would like to see him 
get another hit here and drive at least one, maybe two runs in. On Western Wednesday in the last home game of the 2023 season at Billwood Field. McConaughey takes down low, ball one. Dan, what have been your thoughts on Billwood Field this summer? It's been our home away from home. It's a nice little baseball field. It is. The press box, it's not the best, it's not the coolest, but it's the one that has its closest place in my heart. At least it has a press box. Field. Chopper back to Key and Phillips, and this should retire the inning. Underhands it on to first in plenty of time. And the Plainsmen, first two men, reach base on a walk and a single, and that's all they get. The next three retired. So we go to the sixth inning. Plainsmen holding on to their two run lead. I feel like I need. Heading to the sixth inning we go. Bryce Butterfield back on the bump for the Plainsman. He will be facing the 6-7-8 man for the Rough Riders due up here in the top of the sixth inning. First of the six, it'll be Chris Levinston's before, after Regan Guthrie hits and then Danny Baker batting in the eighth spot. Regan Guthrie today has grounded into a double play and struck out. Stepping into that right-handed batter's box. First pitch you'll see from Bryce Butterfield. He takes a strike. It's 0-1. Oh, 1 pitch to Regan Guthrie swinging a little blooper out into the left side of the infield. That one is played on by Garrett Goldbeck for the first out as he settles under it. A pop-out starts the side in the front of the sixth before Chris Levinston's can come up. Levinston's big number 99 here on the roster from Arvada, Colorado. Comes up. First pitch he sees is called a ball inside. It's 1-0. Arvada borders Golden, a suburb of Denver, just outside of Wheat Ridge, the suburb where the Rough Riders play. Ground ball to short, fielded by Goldbeck. He has retired both batters here in this sixth inning, a 6-3 put out and quickly out number two before Danny Baker can come up to hit. Baker from Longmont, Colorado, just outside of Boulder. Boulder, the home to the University of Colorado, who announced earlier today that they were... Oh, it's number 23. Sorry, I was ready to talk about Colorado making the move to the Big 12 again, but uh, I, I guess it's going to be Matt game. Lake. I had to intervene after call out talking talking about C Boulder. I have a cousin I need to shout out. Shout him out, Dan. Sam Chapel. He's a uh, Sam Chapel. Ring him in, baby. Woo! He is, I think, I'm a biology major that just recently graduated, but he's uh, he's working in the labs, and I I have a story. That ab about Dion. Prime time, baby. Yeah, Dion Sanders. I'm losing my mind okay. today, y'all. Because, so you know how much money he makes, right? Bank. Bank. 
So he was driving a Lamborghini around campus. And it was like typical Denver stereotype. It snows, right? That's oh, what yeah. you think of. He got his Lamborghini stuck. That's why you don't in drive Lamborghinis in cold weather environments. He, he got stuck in the snow in the CU Boulder. So I I just wanted to come on because you 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 were talking about CU Boulder. Nice I campus. Was. Swing and a miss, Bryce Butterfield. Case up Matt Lake as Lake goes down fishing, try to find the American trout, and Standy finds a good old pike with the emphasis on the K. Butterfield send us bottom half of the sixth inning. Plainsman leading by two. North Platte Regional Airport. With two daily flights to Denver, North Platte Regional Airport is just one short connection away from any destination in the world all with short lines and personal service. Remember, on your next flight, to fly with North Platte. Pepsi. From providing beverages to Plainsman home games to being in the local deli's drink cooler, Pepsi is proud to support the North Platte Plainsmen, and our thanks to them for keeping the drink cooler stocked and ready at Billwood Field. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Great Plains Foot and Ankle, providing quality health care since 1991. Great Plains Foot and Ankle is the perfect place to go for any foot pains. And with no referrals needed, it's as easy as ever to schedule an appointment with them today. North Platte Regional Airport. With two daily flights to Denver, North Platte Regional Airport is just one short connection away from any destination in the world. All with short lines and personal service. Remember, on your next flight, to fly with North Platte. Pepsi. From providing beverages to Plainsman home games to being in the local deli's drink cooler, Pepsi is proud to support the North Platte Plainsmen and our thanks to them for keeping the drink cooler stocked and ready at Billwood Field. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Great Plains Foot and Ankle, providing quality health care since 1991. Great Plains Foot and Ankle is the perfect place to go for any foot pains. And with no referrals needed, it's as easy as ever to schedule an appointment with them today. North Platte Regional Airport. With two daily flights to Denver, North Platte Regional Airport is just one short connection away from any destination in the world. All with short lines and personal service. Remember, on your next flight, to fly with North Platte. Andrew LaPearl, the new man on for the Rough Riders. As Kean Phillips' day is done on the mound, he goes five innings, allows nine hits, four runs, all of them earned, four walks and four strikeouts. LaPearl... He went on Monday against the Plainsman who tried the last two outs as the Plainsman and the bases loaded with just one out in the ninth inning. They trailed by just a run. LaPearl shut the door on North Platte and made sure that they did not walk off. The Rough Riders, Gehrig, takes a strike inside. It's 0-1. LaPearl fires that one a bit upstairs and it's one and one. He comes set down low. His one one leadoff man go back swing and a miss and it's one and two. The first year from Arvada, Colorado. Oh geez, Harry, she's him. Harry shocks me, oh my God. Pitches down in front of the plate. So we've got the little horses on a stick. You all know Beatrice, right? Beatrice is a legend. Well, Harry the horse is Beatrice's companion and friend. Are we? You, let's bring it to broadcast cam to show Harry. So come on, Dan, Dan. There we go. That's Beatrice. This is Harry. Harry just came out of nowhere and surprised me. <laughs> Was not ready to see Harry just up in my face. Pitches inside. It's three and two high, Harry. Hi. Oh, I love you, Harry. <laughs> Harry reminds me in many ways of my own horse, Divi, back home. Dan, you can bring it back to the cameras. That ball's going to be a little looper out to right field. Drops in front of the right fielder, Ian Baldwin, a leadoff single against LaPearl. 
for the Plainsman. I say that Harry reminds me of Divi because Divi has a very similar flair on the front of her kind of face as Harry. Harry's got the white flair down his face. Divi has a pretty prominent white flair on her face. Harry is nowhere near as big as Divi. Divi's a half shire and she's a big girl and we love her, but she's massive. She's a tall, tall horse as Rui Yoshida chops it foul off the plate. It's 0-1. We also have Henry Horse, and Henry is a little guy. He's also feisty for a 20-something-year-old horse. And then we also have Amon, the newest addition, the baby horse. He's about four years old now. Little cinnamon-colored horse. That one's going to be a uh, pitch inside and eclipse Rui Yoshida. Hits the elbow guard. Down to second, moves goal back, two on, nobody out. Feels appropriate to shout out our horses that we have back home here on Western Wednesday as we celebrate all things Western at the ballpark. The last Western Wednesday of the year, the last home game of the 2023 regular season with the lights kicked on here at Billwood Field. It'll be Nick Hockmer with two on, nobody out, and the powerful lefty, has yet to be retired today. He's got two singles and hit into a fielder's choice. And Regan Guthrie out to talk to Andrew LaPearl. Try to settle him down. Hockmer, the lefty hitting 352 entering today, has seen that average rise as he's hitting about 600 right now in this ball game, going two for three. First pitch he sees, shows Bunn has to pull back because that one's near up by his face. It's 1-0. Trying to earn his way on before Jovan Suarez gets up after Rui Ushida was clipped by an 0-1 pitch. That put him at first base and advanced goal back down to second. 1-0 to Hockmer, swinging a foul ball over the press box. It's 1-1. One one. Also feels wrong now that I'm shouting out our little critters back at home, at least in terms of the horses. Not to shout out the rest. To the dogs we have are three, Anka, Guster, and Enid. And then to our wonderful little barn cat, Amelia. Hi. I miss you all, and I can't wait to see you when I get home. 1-1 one, one pitch showing bunt as Hockmer gets it down, going down the third baseline. A beautiful bunt on the first. He's got no play. Levenstein's had no option. The most perfect bunt you will ever see by Nick Hockmer, who dropped it right down the third base fair foul line, and it stayed fair. So the bases are full of North Platte Plainsmen. At first is Hockmer, at second is Rui Yoshida, and at third is Gary Golbeck, and all the first three men to face Andrew LaPearl here in the sixth inning have reached safely. Two on hit, and one on a hit by pitch, and the cleanup man Suarez trying to do just that and clean up here against the Rough Riders. Plainsman leading by two, a 4-2 ball game. Firing home, Suarez, a line drive through the left side, gets by the glove of Levenstein, Yoshida holds. Runners go station to station, and the Plainsman lead five to two. Jovan Suarez on the first pitch he sees from La Pearl, singles it past the outstretched glove of Nick Varda and Chris Levenstein's. And the Plainsmen have a run across here in the sixth inning, and the bases loaded, nobody out for Kenneth Sugi. And he came up in this very situation against the Rough Riders in Denver. He takes a strike 0 and 1, and he saw a pitch and absolutely destroyed one over the right field's wall. A grand slam, and it's safe to say that I lost my mind on that one. He hits this one on the infield, playable for Weston Miller. Miller on to second for one, on to first, it's wide. He was going to be safe anyway, so that's going to be a hit, but Hockmer comes in to score on the error. Plainsman plate two runs as Rui Yoshida and eventually Nick Hockmer come around to score. Jovan Suarez is retired. And the Plainsmen have increased their lead. They lead 7-2, to two, three across here in the inning. Reaches on an E6 as scoring on the error is Hockmer. So now it's Tucker Bond with Sugi down at second base. First pitch, Bond takes a strike and it's 0-1. 
Tucker Bond, his walk-up song, not been too appreciated by us this season, but it's Clumsy by Fergie. And this is kind of perfect when he comes up to the plate, bumbling, stumbling, trying to fall his way into a hit, and he might have one here, a tough play on the infield for the second baseman on first in time. Gets the sluggish Bond down to third goes Suki. Weston Miller, a 4-3 put out, and there are two outs, runner at third. Plainsmen have already scored three here in the sixth inning, and now it's time for Carmelo Ortiz. Getting a hand in what will be his final game in the Plainsman uniform. Here in the sixth inning for Carmelo Ortiz. He swings and misses, it's 0-1. Ortiz, after this will be replaced by Tristan Byers, the Legion kid who will catch all three games in Hayes. There's a ball a bit outside, it's one and one. Byers caught the first game of this Plainsman Rough Rider series. A loss by the Plainsman, Ortiz has caught the last two. Mid game was a win, Plainsman trying to secure the rubber match. They lead by five, swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Two down here in the seventh. Excuse me, bottom of the sixth, I am off. That's where broadcaster brain is right now. One, two, pop up, in play on the left side. Sugi going home, but this should end the inning. And making the catch is Nick Varda. On to the seventh inning we go. Plainsmen scored three runs in the bottom of the sixth, and they have taken a 7-2 lead, a five-run margin for North Platte as we head to the break with Bryce Butterfield back on the bump. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of local establishments. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Clear, focused eye care with comprehensive optometry service ranging from exams, corrective lenses, and treatments for dry eye. Clear Focus is your one-stop shop for any visual needs you have. Check them out at clearfocuseyecare.com. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of local establishments. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio, Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Bryce Butterfield out. For the top of the seventh inning for the North Platte Plainsman on what will be his final start in the green and white. His last game as a Plainsman, his season will end after today. Butterfield does not go on the road with the team after the birth of his daughter. That one is smashed through the right side, a soft hit single by the nine hitter. It was a pinch hitter up to go. John Mallow smacks it through, a leadoff single for the Rough Riders. In a 7-2 Plainsman lead. And it seemed like he was only going to get three turns for the rotation. Jared Jones is out. And Bryce Butterfield happens to know what's going on. We're going to keep it here to get the hand that Bryce Butterfield gets. His last outing as a Plainsman. Thank you. 
Bryce Butterfield and Carmelo Ortiz leave the field at the same time in a scene reminiscent of last year. If you watch the St. Louis Cardinals, when Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright, and Albert Pujols all left the field at the same time, Ortiz and Butterfield in their final games in a Plainsman uniform leave and get a huge ovation from the crowd. Nick Flores, the lefty on to face the top of the lineup. Caleb McClellan, who swing and a miss, strike one, the first batter on that lefty Flores face. Butterfield goes six innings. He allows six hits, three walks, five strikeouts. He's on tab for the two runs already across and the man down at first base, who Flores will inherit. Plainsman lead by five. McClellan, a chopper, foul on the left side. It's 0-2. As Bryce Butterfield got a huge ovation from the home crowd and a huge thanks by all his teammates who gave him a hug out there on the mound, said their thank yous, and then Butterfield the tip of his cap as he walked off the mound along with his catcher. So Tristan Byers now behind the plate who will be taking over for Ortiz the rest of the season. 0-2 home a bit away and it's 1-2. and two. Byers has to slide over and throw it back to Flores to keep John Mallow Honest down at first. The pinch hitter for Nick Varda as back to the top and Caleb McClellan facing a 1-2 count. He will swing and lash that one off of Jovan Suarez, plays it and the speedy man will get on. That's gonna be a single as it took a bounce pretty weirdly off of Suarez and the first two men have reached on hits. Down to second goes Mallow and there's two on, nobody out for Weston Miller who today has been hit by a pitch, walked, and has been retired just once. That was back in the first when he grounded out to Garrick Goldbeck. Miller, number one, on the roster for the Colorado Rough Riders. The sophomore from Golden goes to Regis University, same school that Major Maiden went to. He shows bunt, now has to pull back a 1-0 and count down to the second baseman today. Miller setting on up. He's got John Mallow in scoring position as the Rough Riders trail by five now against the new lefty, Flores. 1-0 pitch, shows bunt. That one goes down, but it goes foul on the third base line. It's one and one. Had pretty good distance, but missed being fair by a couple good feet. So Weston Miller will have to go back into the box. 1-1 one, one count, two on, no out. The son of Adam and Shani, Shani, not, Shine, Shane, Shine, Shine Miller. Shana Miller, thanks Nicole. <laughs> Sorry if you're watching this, I don't know how to pronounce your name. One and one is bunted, that's fair on the right side. Tucker Bond fields, he's gonna go for the tag himself and he's got him. Runners advance one base on the bunt. So the runners at second and third with one out. A good job by Miller to get the bunt down. And that's gonna bring up Mark Hamry, who has singled in the first. He's also flown out to Hockmer and struck out swinging. He's got no double play against him unless he lines into one here. First pitch, the lefty. And that one clipped him by the hand. The lefty Mark Camry, a hit by pitch, bases loaded, one out. And so the first pitch that Flores in a lefty-lefty matchup works way too inside and it caught the hands. And so they're loaded, one out, and the double play is back on for the Plainsman. Ian Baldwin up in a five-run ball game with the bases loaded and one out. Rough Riders here top of the seventh, trying to earn something back against the Plainsman, who exploded for three in the last of the sixths. First pitch to Baldwin, swing and a miss down low, it's 0-1. So Flores looking back in. Here's the 0-1, pitch is away, it's 1-1. One one. Flores has thrown 10 innings this year. In six games has allowed 14 hits, 11 earned runs, pitched to a 9.90 ERA with 15 strikeouts and 10 walks after he came over in the middle of the season from the Casper Spuds. 1-1 is a hot shot foul, and it's 1-2. and two. 
Flores and Matt Slowick were the two pitchers who came over from the Spuds this year. After both previous, after uh, Flores previous played for our owner Chuck Keeman with the Casper Horseheads last year, Slowick last year part of the Independence League with the Gem City Bison. Flores, the lefty, the one two home to Ian Baldwin, falls over on the mound, making the pitch a double play ball. Six to four on to first, four, three. He got him. Double play burned by the Plainsman. And Bryce Butterfield, you can close the book. Only two runs against him, nothing across in the inning. Seven to two as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Plainsman on top. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of local establishments. With three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All back with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Clear, focused eye care with comprehensive optometry service ranging from exams, corrective lenses, and treatments for dry eye. Clear Focus is your one-stop shop for any visual needs you have. Check them out at clearfocuseyecare.com. Nebraska Land Bank. Nebraska Land provides big bank services with the benefits of local establishments. In three locations in North Platte, Nebraska Land provides home loans and personal accounting services along with business service as well. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All back with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Clear, focused eye care. With Andrew LaPearl against the Plainsman works just one inning on the mound, gives up four hits, three runs, just two of them earned. And now on the mound, we will see Jordan Oliver back out his second time facing the Plainsman. He got one out against the Plainsman in the bottom of the ninth inning on Monday night. That was a strikeout, but he allowed the bases to get loaded and a run against him. And so he left after that. And then Andrew LaPearl came in relief of him and shut the door. So now Oliver in relief of LaPearl. Oliver, the first year from Millersville University from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster, down around central south Pennsylvania, was the former capital of the state of Pennsylvania until 1812 when it was moved to where it is now in Harrisburg. Oliver, the big righty on the mound, has pitched two innings against non-league competition this year in two games, has allowed just one run, three walks, and four strikeouts, a 4-5-0 ERA. That one run came on Monday night. He got a save against the Pioneers, and now he will try and shut the door against the Plainsman, who will hit Sam Bond, Kyle McConaughey, and Garrick Goldbeck. So Sam Bond leading off this Bottom of the seventh inning, and with two outs, you're going to hear Dan and I leave you and go downstairs because we have to hold the bats for Dizzy Bat as it's a carryover from intern night when we weren't able to do that. That ball is hit in the air left side. It's going to be a tough play for Levenstein's and McClellan. McClellan comes on, makes the catch. There is out number one. A little pop out to the left fielder, and the leadoff man retired to bring up Kyle McConaughey, who's two for three on the day with a single and a double. Only time he's been retired was a ground out back to the pitcher, who at the time was Kean Phillips. McConaughey on the first pitch takes low. There's a ball. It's 1-0. and oh. McConaughey trying to get on for the top of the order in Gary Goldbeck with one man out. Goldbeck has some serious potential in that swing of his. We'll wait and see. 1-0 and oh as Jordan Oliver steps off the mound and will reset himself out there.
Looking in for the sign from the catcher. Regan Guthrie, 1-0, swing and a miss, and it's 1-1 one and one from Jordan Oliver. Oliver did not play this past year for Millersville University, but played high school ball at Lancaster Catholic High School, a part of the Lebanon League, and stepping off the rubber is Oliver. Out to settle him down is Regan Guthrie. He was the 21st ranked right-handed pitcher in the state of Pennsylvania, 77th overall ranked player in the state when he was coming out of high school. Part of that was his time spent with the Keystone State Bombers regional prep team, sharing a name with the school that I happened to go to, the Ithaca Bombers. And as we say on South Hill, roll bombs. <laughs> one, one, one out onto Kyle McConaughey. Trying to earn his way on before Gary Golbeck can come up. Pitch McConaughey hits a little line drive into the outfield. That ball's going to drop before anybody can get to it. McConaughey, a one-out single for the Plainsman. And he is on his third hit of the ball game. Puts it up through, and now it's Gary Golbeck, who has two singles in the day and has been retired twice, batting 500 here on the Plainsman home closer. He'll be followed by Rui Yoshida. As looking over to first is Jordan Oliver. McConaughey holds, pitches down, one and zero. Oh. Leading off of first is McConaughey, who has stolen 14 bags this year, including two today. 1-0, Goldbeck takes upstairs, it's 2-0. Waiting on deck, Rui Yoshida, who has yet to get an extra base hit this year. He's trying to do it today in front of the favorable home crowd. But obviously anything can happen in these kind of ball games. 2-0 to the lefty, Goldbeck, who stands with his open stride. McConaughey... Holds, 2-0 is taken inside for a strike, and it's 2-1 to the lefty. Coming set up is Jordan Oliver, his first time on the mound today, up high, 3-0, and Gary Golbeck, affectionately known to the team as Goldie, trying to work a walk and put two on with one out before Rui Yoshida can come up to hit. Goldbeck waits with McConaughey at first. The three one pitch, Goldbeck takes a strike and it's three and two, so the count runs full from Jordan Oliver. So Mr. Oliver Oil, as I'm gonna call him due to my love of olive oil, has worked a full count with one out to Gary Golbeck. I'm hearing boos from y'all, but at least I'm doing something. Golbeck takes outside, ball four. The leadoff man in the Plainsman order walks, and there's two on with one out for Rui Yoshida, who has zero extra base hits when wearing the Plainsman green and white. On the season, he has 17 hits. All 17 are singles. He had a double on Saturday against the Denver Cougars. However, Saturday's game in a cruel twist of irony ended in the third inning, and Yoshida's double doesn't count. Swing and a chopper back towards the concession stand. It's 0-1. And that one nearly caught our intern, Olivia. Come on, Olivia. You got to be awake for a foul ball. That's bad. I am giving a tisk, 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 tisk. Oh, and one to Rui Yoshida with two on and one out. Runners hold, pitch home, takes in the dirt, a good block by Guthrie, and it's one and one. As the sun starts to go away for one final time here at Billwood Field in the 2023 regular season, and we can appreciate what is always a gorgeous sight, a sunset in North Platte, Nebraska during a ball game. One and one the count, one out, two men on base. Yoshida standing up in the batter's box. 
And stepping off is Jordan Oliver. So singles, wild. One ball, one strike, one out. The only difference now between that is there are two men on base. Looking in is Jordan Oliver. Ruyushita giving signs to his base runners and getting set with the batting gloves. Torrell's the bat, now comes set with the bat behind his head. The righty on a 1-1 fouls it off to the screen, and it's 1-2. and two. With one man out, two men on base. Plainsmen lead by five, a 7-2 game here in the last of the seventh inning. Looking to end the home stretch and the home season out on a high note. A win, and it would also be their first series win of this 2023 campaign. 1-2 to Yoshida is down in the dirt. A good block by Guthrie, but it ends up skipping away. Down to third goes McConaughey. So it's a 2-2 count with the runner at third base. And one man out. The wheels of Kyle McConaughey churning in motion. He is 90 feet away from making it 8-2 here in the seventh. What would be a six-run lead for the Plainsmen. A cushion they would love with their bullpen looking as it has been. Here's the 2-2 to Rui Yoshida. It is down and a full count. So back-to-back -back hitters work a full count against Jordan Oliver. Go back, walk. We'll see what Yoshida can do. Rui Yoshida, three and two the count with one out. Runners at the corners. Plainsmen scored three in the last frame. They lead by five. Goldbeck breaks from first, pitches down, ball four, a walk, and the bases are loaded with one man out. So Gary Goldbeck break from first. He likely would have been safe. So now comes up Nick Hockmer with the bases loaded and one out. Rough Riders would love a double play. Plainsmen would love a run to come across and score. Hockmer, the big lefty, has yet to have his defining power hit. He's got a couple of doubles on the season. There is a strike taken down by the knees. It's 0-1. Hockmer has ripped seven doubles this year of the 40 hits that he has had. 37 singles, including three today. 0-1 pitch. Hockmer takes away. It's 1-1. One one. He's reached base successfully every time. Three singles in a fielder's choice. He came to score in the last hitting. That is when the Plainsmen played at three, which they've done twice today. Down at second is Golbeck. First is Yoshida. Third is McConaughey. Pitches in the dirt. A good backhand by Guthrie, but it's two and one. Picked that ball out of the dirt. Kept McConaughey down there at third base. And all the runners honest, he wiped the sweat from his face. Now puts the mask back on his helmet. Gets in the crouch. And waits for the 2-1 pitch from Jordan Oliver, who comes set up by the Rough Riders logo on the jersey. 2-1 and one is away, 3-1, and one, and a pitch outside the zone from walking with the bases loaded and making this game 8-2 North Platte with Jovan Suarez due up. Coming set is Oliver. His 3-1 offering is down low, ball four, bases loaded walk, and the Plainsmen have been doing that a lot lately. It is now an 8-2 ball game. Scoring is McConaughey. Down a third goes Goldback. On a second is Rui Yoshida. Still just one man out for Jovan Suarez. Suarez, the cleanup hitter, has walked once, singled once, reached on an error, and has flown out to Jordan McClellan. Oh, yeah. Suarez takes low. Ball one. Runners hold. If the Plainsmen score four runs here, which all it would take is a nice smack by Suarez, the game would be over as they would have run-ruled the Rough Riders on back-to-back -back nights. 
And Regan Guthrie out to settle down his man, Jordan Oliver, with one out, a 1-0 count, and the base is juiced. One zero, man down. Plainsman trying to settle down the Rough Riders and get some runs across here. They've already got one across here in the seventh. They lead eight to two. Looking in is Oliver from the sign from Regan Guthrie. He's got it come set now down. The one zero. That is a ball. It's two and zero. As Guthrie cannot work it out, there is a righty down in the Rough Riders bullpen. So likely, if a man comes in again here against Oliver, we could see him get pulled. He's faced five. 2-0 is down, skips off the plate down the third base line, runner's hole, but it's 3-0. In danger of walking another man in with one out on a 3-0 count. That would make it Plainsman leading by seven. It would make it a 9-2 game, and the magic number down to three to walk off the Rough Riders via the run rule. Suarez settles up, a 3-0 count, bases loaded, one out. Pitch by Jordan Oliver, there's a strike, finally finds the zone. It's three and one with one out. Bases loaded, three balls, one strike. And we would really love to see intern Dizzy Bat tonight. Oliver's pitch home. Suarez takes low. Ball four. Another run has walked in for the Plainsman. That is two in the inning. Both have come on a bases loaded walk from Jordan Oliver. And the last four men have walked on the Plainsman batting side. They have now made it a 9-2 lead. And out is the coach. And out from the bullpen comes another righty for the Rough Riders. So they will be the day for Jordan Oliver. He cannot get through against the Plainsman this time, just like he did the other day in the ninth. New righty when we come back. Jordan Oliver faces six Plainsman hitters. He retires just one man. That was the first man he faced, Sam Bond, on a flyout to Kayla McClellan. Ever since then, he has walked five batters and allowed one hit. Excuse me, walked four batters and allowed one hit. Kenneth Suki is due up against Mason Stepp. 
the righty from Waynesville, North Carolina, who goes to USC Union. Sugi fouls it off the catcher, quickly 0-1. Step on the season, has pitched one inning on two games. He's allowed two hits, four earned runs, two walks and two strikeouts, an ERA of 36. Both of those games, one against the Pioneers, one against the Plainsmen, he could not retire a batter. He was the man that Sugi hit the grand slam off of in Wheat Ridge. Sugi takes outside, one and one the count. So Sugi's got some history against the righty Mason Stepp, who made 11 appearances and pitched to a 5 6 8 ERA with USC Union. There is a ball down low, it's two and one. Plainsmen have worked four consecutive walks against Rough Riders pitching, and the magic number to walk them off via the run rule is down to three. They lead nine to two here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Setting inside is Mason Stepp, the righty. His 2-1 offering. Sugi lashes one through the glove of Chris Levinston's. Scoring is Yoshida. Station to station go the Plainsmen. One out, and the magic number is down to two, Dan. As the Plainsmen keep the line moving, an RBI single by Kenneth Sugi. He continues to have a good day. Still just one man out, and Tucker Bond due up. Bond, one for four on the ball game today. Rough Riders playing with a double play and hope. And playing in is Mark Hamry, the first baseman. Tucker Bond, first pitch, swinging a chopper on to third. Going to have a play on a second for one. And they get the runner tagged out. Scoring is a man, but there are two away. Bond reaches on the fielder's choice. As Sugi goes out of the base paths, run does score. It is... 11 to two, and if the Plainsmen score just one more run, this game would end right here and there. Two outs, so we gotta go downstairs.
Well, we are done. Plainsmen walk it off against the Rough Riders. Let me know when you're ready for the photo, Trevor, and I'll come over and uh, cut this short. But the Plainsmen, a walk-off single hit by... It's not on broadcast cam, damn. Now it's on broadcast cam! We brought it back. The last time we ever get to see broadcast cam at a home baseball game at Billwood Field. We will not have our setup on the road. So everyone, get in. Say hi. Oh, this is sweet. Daniel, come on in. Let's get in on the photo. I spelled lasagna wrong. <laughs> that was good. All right. Corey, you got to move. Oh, man. There we go. Much needed photo of all of us. To the best press box crew in the world this past year, I thank you for a wonderful summer of Plainsman baseball at home. You have made Billwood Field a second home away from home. So I thank you for all the wonderful times and the good fun we had over this past year. It's going to be a rough one as we head on to Hayes for the final three games. I do employ her, even though the Hayes Larks have a YouTube stream of their own, to do what we all do when we're on the road. Put the YouTube live stream up, and then for audio, have Citrus 3 Radio going as I have the call of the Plainsmen and the Hayes Larks for the last three of the, radio, of the regular season, especially the final game when I give all my full list of thank yous. But today to our press box crew, to Logan, our guy who did sound, our sound man, to Harmon, our public address announcer, to Trevor, the scoreboard operator, to Levi, to Faith, to Daniel, and even to Jake from the North Platte Telegraph, a huge thank you to all of you who were the press box crew this past year for making Billwood Field a fun and exciting place to go to every single baseball game. I truly thank you for a wonderful summer. As the Plainsmen win game 43 on a walk-off single, they bat around in the seventh inning, and they run rule the Rough Riders for their second straight game in a row, and the Plainsmen or in what is series win number one in the season on their last home series of the year. No better time to do it. No better game to do it than the final home series. And no better game, no better... We're back! Dan unplugged everything and almost ruined it all after a wonderful thank you and beautiful send-off message. And Dan, I might smack you over there if I wasn't calling the Plainsman first series win of the year. And they go on the road to Hayes for the final three games, but for now, and for the last time on the Plainsman YouTube stream, Tobias Zabore, Daniel Castagna, and everyone in the press box saying thank you and so long. Thank you for joining us for this one final game, and we hope you tune into Citrus 3 Radio and put it up right alongside the Larks broadcast as the Plainsmen go for their final three against the Hayes Larks. From Billwood Field, for the last time, Tobias Abore saying so long. We'll see you in Hayes.